I'm unmuting myself. Can't make me mute during this countdown. Alan, you're ruining the countdown. Uh oh. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Chatting with Nuts. I've been wanting to do that for so long. I think freaking muted me. I know. <laughs> I was literally I was in the middle of talking to you, and the stupid the stupid muted me on purpose. Or like force muted me. I was like, I, I see that unmute button. I'm gonna see if I can press it, and I did, and it worked. You were like middle sentence, and it just. Boop. I was too. I was saying there's too much pressure. Like literally, people in the comments talking about how like epic this is gonna be watch y'all gonna be disappointed it's gonna be lame now <laughs> it's not not gonna be on purpose well i mean we're back for the 29th episode oh, of chatting with nuts uh live really yeah man we're at 29 i think you've been on six of them or seven i, I think it's i think it's only five no is it i think it's only five no 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 well, it's sir. not seven so if it's not five it's six it's yeah, I think I'm I'm gonna someone can go back and count, but I'm pretty sure yeah, this is number six. Hey, really? Um yeah, That's we crazy. almost have uh one for every day of the week between me and you, well, which is how's it how's it feel to have uh to be to be the big name star here? I think you passed me in subs. Yeah, you did. I think you Wait, did, did I? Mm -hmm. yeah. Wait, don't you I thought you had ten thousand. Or am I getting Dude, you? Dude, I have seventy seven hundred. <laughs> I have finally eclipsed. Well, Alan, it's been a pleasure talking to you tonight. Um, I know, right? <laughs> I know. You can only talk to people with a bigger sub count. I'm sorry. I know. Man. That's why you had Philip last time. I, I don't. I don't make the. I'm coming for his crown next. He's not safe. He thinks he can write this book, and then he's going to be this big star. You know, stupid Philip. <laughs> he needs to let me read his arc so I can give it like two stars and be like, "Look, Philip." Were you slightly happened. offended when you saw the Gwyn brothers had one? I mean, I said, I mean, if I, if it hadn't have been this month, then yes, but I didn't have time to read it anyway. I wouldn't have read it anyway. He sent me one and then I just felt bad for not reading it. So if it was like March, then I'd have been like, Philip, Philip. <laughs> that just means it's going to have Viking stuff in it. So I'm going to have to be like, Philip, there's too much Viking stuff in your books. I mean, you're a big fan of the Norse stuff, right? I'm not. I'm going to give it one star. <laughs> one star. Yeah, he's never on time for these things, so it's always good to, um, you know, badmouth him early. Your yeah. mama nuts. Your mom has been on my, like, productivity live things that I've been doing. Wait, what? Yeah, she shows up randomly to these random live things. <laughs> Wait, my mom is in your streams? Yeah, yeah. Is this like a diss? Are you dissing me? No, or is I'm 100% this... serious. Your mom's been on, like, two of them. Mom, what are you doing? <laughs> She'll show up and be like, hey, I don't know. I'll be like, mama nuts. <laughs> this is a true story. That makes me happy. That makes we me took happy. that down, Alex. Spring break. So, like. Two months ago, right? We took it on spring break, right? What? The tree down, spring break? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, like two months ago. Yeah, so yeah, I think it was down last time we talked. Now, I can't remember. Did we talk after ICFA? We did, didn't we? I think our last chat was after ICFA. Was it? Where we talked like mad smack. But we haven't talked since the champion episode of Jeopardy, which you competed, which was excellent. I, I, thought, about on the, I thought about that on the way home. On the way home, I was like, you know what? Like my absence from BookTube really kind of began after that. Like I think, like I think I subconsciously had to leave because of the embarrassing uh, performance that I gave, and I so I, I haven't been anywhere. <laughs> I, I I honestly had this moment where I was like, because I'm in, I went hard on you and Philip, like really hard, and I was like, did I hurt Alan? Like did, did I offend Alan? Like is Alan mad at me? I was so nervous that I went too far because I, I get carried away. No, you're totally fine. No, what happened is I just got really busy at school. So I'm at school like till late every day, hanging out with these freaking kids. And we went in our competition. Um, and you know, that was magical or whatever. Yeah. And so I've just been doing just been doing a lot of that. And I get home and I'm like, I could film something, but I have a bunch of work to do and I yeah. don't want to edit it. So what if I just leave it till later? knowing that at 9.30, I'm be like, I ain't filming a video at 9.30 and I did no video at 9.30. Um, and so I don't do anything. And then I feel bad. And so I just <laughs> have this like huge like weight of responsibility of having done nothing. Because um, I haven't. Like last month and a half, I've done almost nothing. Um, 
It's very depressing. In April, I finished Grave Peril. That you'll recall, I started in March. Yes, that is what I need to chat about. We still need to chat about. Oh, I know. (laughs) That's what I read in in April, though. Was I finished Grave Peril? Good book. Good book. I mean. It went on too long. Like, what Grave Peril went on too long. It's interesting you say that because I, I actually, I mean, like, I, I thought it was good. I thought it was the best one of the three, but I did feel like, um, like it kind of faltered a little bit at the ending. Like I just I was, needed it to end. Like, it kept ending. And I'm like, what is still happening? Why are they still in this house? Like, oh my gosh, move it along. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we need we do need to do that. Um, I have so many people who are who have been pumped. They're like, "You're doing a discussion with with Alan and Sarah." I'm like, "Yeah, let's, let's I'll let let I'll schedule it. I'll mess right. there while we're." Talking. And then you need to read <laughs> the God is not willing. I mean, I'm not trying to pressure you or anything. It's on my it's on my shelf right there, like my stack of crap that I'm behind. Re- reading nothing in April was inexcusable, and so it set me behind uh, so much, and now I'm sad because well, I'm so behind. I mean, you say you didn't do you didn't do anything, Alan, but you you were a star of a production of the Iliad. Oh, I did that last month too. Yeah, oh, yeah right. I did oh, do that at the end of the month. Yeah, I had to relearn all those freaking lines. <laughs> so tiring. I mean, honestly, man, uh, your performance and people—if you don't know what I'm talking about—Alan did a one-man show, and he he's done it before, uh, but this is the first time, as far as I know, that it's been posted online. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you just have a tremendous talent, man, for entertaining people. I appreciate that. It was it was very very it was it was the most rewarding I got to do because like like 50 of my kids came out which was really 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 exciting. Um dang Philip Slate. Dang. Dang Philip Philip missed all our all our bad mouthing. Thank you so much Christian. I appreciate that. Um yeah, it was it was really it was really rewarding to do it for my students. Um so I really I really really enjoyed that. But I mean again, that's it's it's 80 minutes of text. I mean, dude, it's one of the most, I could never do that. Like I could prep for a year and my concussion riddled brain. I would never be able to do that. I get Um, that. I have so much respect for it. It's so it's, it's hard. I hadn't done it in two and a half years. So I've done it like, you know, I've done it like 30 times. Um, Sometimes like six in a weekend, but usually I, there's maybe a year between when I do it like max yeah. But two and a half years, it took it was the longest it's taken to relearn it since learning it the first time. Mm-hmm. Usually, like I can get it, you know, if there's like three months between it, like the first time I did it, um, yeah, if there's like three three months between it, I can get it in a week. This took it took so freaking long. I was still I was still rememorizing it an hour and a half before the show went on. <laughs> it's 4 30. We went on at six, and I'm like. I'm gonna get this last page and a half. I got to. Show's got to end at some point. So, listen. When when the going gets tough, you show up, and, and and you did a great job. You did a great I, job, man. It was very exciting. But I mean, that's you know, that's another thing. I've been. I'm glad you reminded me about that. I literally forgot I did that. So that makes me feel excited. <laughs> How did you bad. forget? Because my I, I can't remember anything. My kids, my students, have commented, "Be like, Mr. Walker, your short term memory is awful," and I'm like it. I, I know it's been really bad recently and I took an online test to make sure I didn't have early onset Alzheimer's. Like I took a little short-term memory test and I got 97%. And I'm like, suck it dementia. Uh, <laughs> Cause I was starting to worry. Cause they're like, Mr. Walker, every time you see my car, you comment that there's a TARDIS on it. I'm like, really? They're like, yes. I'm like, Oh, okay. I, I so I'm trying I'm trying to do better about remembering short-term crap. That's probably true, Gary. I probably need more sleep. I think I have some like cartilage discs. I know what you mean by like freaking out. Like, do I have dementia? It's like for me, I, I, I something's wrong with like my ribs or like cartilage in my chest. Yeah. And like I get chest pains. I'm like, am I having a heart attack? Yeah. And maybe I am. Yeah. Because I eat like all the red meat. And I'm like, maybe it's time. Like maybe yeah. I'm going down. Yeah. And part of it, and part of it is I just have so much going on right now. There's too much. My brain is moving too fast and so i'm always multitasking even if i'm talking there to people i'm thinking about something else and so that's why my children my students tell me something and then i ask them about it like a minute later i'm like i wasn't listening guys like you need to make sure that i'm not like typing while i'm talking to you because if i'm sitting here typing grades or writing slides like I, like i'm hearing what you're saying but i'm like funneling it for important information i didn't realize what you said was important so um 
it's just, and, and you know, my medicine helps me hyper focus, but then it keeps my brain working a million miles a minute. So I'm just, I've just been scatterbrained this last month or so. Cause I've just been doing way more because before, before April, I was like, okay, like I'm at school, school's fine. But then I started staying at school like a bunch. And so now I got school yeah. a ton. Yeah. Downward dog. Um, so yeah. So it's just been, it's been, it's been whatever it is. I haven't talked to you hardly at all as we were talking about right before we went on. <laughs> yeah, dude. I haven't mean... talked to you since freaking Jeopardy. And that's because I'm, I'm mad at you. Apparently I'm, I'm not. I did have that moment. I was like, Oh no, did, did, did I go too far? But I, know. I was just like, I was just like, yes, I suck at Jeopardy. <laughs> so, <laughs> whatever. I, um, I have been very absent in my social circles i feel lately and that's because we've been house hunting and uh, i am pleased to announce that that hunt has come to an end uh and we have found a house um so we will be it is my home. house jimmy and his <laughs> wife are actually moving into my spare bedroom yes we were waiting for the stream to unleash that news. <laughs> I would do that if you wanted to. I'm, just, I'm good for half rent. I promise. Nice. Uh, well, I, the, fortunately, I can I can afford to live where I live because my in laws own our house. So oh, that's my great. Yeah. My ex boss is my landlord. That's uh, nice. Which doesn't sound as it sounds way more intimidating than it is. Uh, yeah, but I mean, knowing someone. Like that's that's a good thing right now because it's freaking ridiculous. I'm going to talk about the housing market. I'm going to get enraged. Uh, I uh, I I am not a fan. I have to say, it's, I'm going to get I'm going to get enraged. It's so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. The it houses really are not this expensive. They're not worth as much. I want to burn all of them. But all that would do is de increase scarcity, and so the price would go up even more. So stupid. But you know what's great is I found a house, Alan that has built-in bookshelves among a no, you... fireplace and it's like a cathedral awesome. ceiling. So everyone who has told me get Kelsey bookshelves, Kelsey finally has bookshelves. It's going to be Kelsey's corner. And I don't have to hear the cries that, uh, that Kelsey needs, uh, <laughs> that she needs. That's awesome. Anymore. That's awesome. <laughs> so very excited. And uh, I know I've mentioned a couple times on stream, so I want to uh, thank everyone for their well wishes. Um, very, very nice. Philip, we were dunking on you before you got before you got here. Yes, we were. Amanda, that's so generous of you. Uh, Amanda with the 20 spot house for me present. Pretend this is a nice plant oh. or something. Amanda, you are uh, a wonderful person. Uh, I, I love Amanda dearly. Also, uh, hey, Kelsey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, she just found out that y'all are moving into our spare bedroom. Yeah, she just found out. She's very excited. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> um, Amanda is um newer on booktube she has a channel she ranked uh, a tier list of brandon sanderson books though she's never read a brandon sanderson book so i thought that video was excellent um and, and any malazan fans that are in the crowd amanda is doing a i think it's bi-weekly podcast and she's going through each uh part of malazan book of the fall and she's in gardens of the moon right now um and she'll be covering that with a brand new reader it's her first reread so anyone that's interested in malazan content make sure to check out shelf unstable and Amanda, thank you again for the 20 spots. Extremely generous of you. Extremely generous. Yeah, man. Uh, but I feel like I can kind of get back to uh to focusing on on the fun stuff, right? Like, and I feel like you I know you're stressed out right now, but you do have summer vacation coming up. And I know it's not exactly, you know, total free time, right? Yeah. And I mean, and it's been good. Like, I've been spending a lot of time with my students, which I have a I have the best crop of students that I've ever had, at least the ones that, that, that really, really care. And yeah, it, so it's, it's just been fantastic. And I've got, one of them is trying out for, so our um, level two, sorry, our intermediate um, Latin quiz bowl team, boop, you buzz in and answer questions. Right. Um, we got second at state and that never happens because most you don't make it to finals. You don't make it to the finals because yeah. the people who make it to the finals are the private schools who literally drill it like it's a professional sport. And, you know, you have to be there and, you know, they they like, no, do it again. You know, crap like that. And I'm like, that doesn't sound fun at all. <laughs> so, but we made it, to, we got second. And so the people there were like, your team needs to try out for the state team because we're going to national and thinking two girls to the national convention in Louisiana here at the, at the end of July, where all the States compete against each other. We just competed against other schools in Florida. Right. So 
there, the, each state has its own quiz bowl team. So one of my one of my girls is trying out for the state level two quiz bowl team. And so I'm going to be driving her down there for tryouts down to Gainesville for tryouts. Um, nice. She's got three different tryouts to try to make it. And she's excited. She's, well, we're she's, we're she's rooting excited. for her, man. Yes, I will tell her that. She's brilliant. Um, and so hopefully, um, you know, I just I hope it's fun for her because I was like, if you want to do this, like I'm behind you. I just hope it's not like a drag where everyone is takes everything way too seriously and it's not fun. Um, yeah. and so hopefully it's not. So well, I, ho- I hope it goes well. And and like I said, we got uh, 122 people that are rooting for her. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so I've just been tired. And so I'm going to see, I'm, you know, I'm going to see the kids over the summer for that and things mm-hmm. like that. But I got, it's just, I just have work during the summer. I got to, right that, freaking slides <laughs> that's why i said i said you know i know it's summer vacation but it's not a complete you know it's not like what people think where you just you know go crazy for three months and then come back on the first day of school when everything's in order right oh my gosh jimmy i can't like <laughs> Jimmy, i read like i don't understand first of all you people on the internet i'm not talking about anybody here in this because you're in this stream we're all wonderful bag. <laughs> i do not understand anyone's desire to be like a douche online, but every single story that comes out, anytime anybody posts anything about teachers, anytime, someone's got to chime in and talk about how, well, you get summers off and great benefits. I'm like, first of all, shut up. I don't get great benefits. Like, shut up. Where are y'all getting that? I keep hearing the great benefit thing. I don't get good benefits. I pay, I don't pay a ton for health insurance, but I got a $5,000 deductible. So like, unless I'm like dead, <laughs> I'm just gonna do a dang thing. First of all, I don't get great benefits. Guess how much maternity leave or paternity leave I get for my benefits, zero days. Like- Well, you get summer, you just have a kid in summer, you know, cause that and always- it's- And they only work, like, shut up. One, I don't get paid for the time I don't work dummy so i'm if even if i was sitting here i'm not i don't have any money like i don't have any money idiot second like i'm working the whole bleeding time so i could teach your kids who are failing my class because they're stupid so oh my gosh i just i don't understand why people need to do that i don't i I don't get it the one i looked at yesterday dude's like well i i worked 40 hours a week um every day with a week with two weeks off I work 40 hours uh, a week every week with only two weeks of paid vacation off. And uh, you tell me, I want to see a teacher that works those hours. Me, me, every single week, I work more than 40 hours. Bro, hey, old man, I understand your 40-hour shift on the rivet line during (laughs) World War II so we can pump out some planes. Like, I get it. I get it. I work more than 40 hours a week every week bro like bro. i'm so sick of it i'm so like and i'm ang- guys i'm angry and i normally would be i got a headache right behind my eye I'm just <laughs> me grumpy. but I'm, I'm just tired of it like i'm so tired of it and you know i'm not gonna launch into like maybe later i'll launch into a longer discussion about all this crap but it just make it just make i don't understand why people need to get online and belittle other people like that i don't understand it like okay cool you don't think teachers should be paid more this is clearly a thread where teachers are feeling like are feeling not appreciated why do you feel the need to chime in and be like well they knew what they were getting into when they started teaching like they could they they could get a different job if they wanted to shut up like shut up no yeah stop well also it's naive to think that the teaching hasn't changed over the last 20 years or so i mean things have changed drastically 100 and people saying like people like well like because teacher appreciation week was recently and did you feel appreciated? No, no, <laughs> no. I got to watch a big video of people in my community of the freaking aristocracy of my community talking about how much they appreciate teachers. When I know, I know every bloody one of them voted down the teacher raise because they didn't want to, they didn't want to raise their property taxes. But you get a pizza party. No, no, I did not. You no, didn't get I a, did not. you didn't no. get a hot and ready. No, they didn't give you little Caesars. No, no. What is this world coming to? I don't know, but I hate this thing. We know you guys don't do it for the money. Like, shut up. Yes, I do. <laughs> I, I work for the paycheck. That is why I work. You, you're not right. 
toxic positivity. There is too much toxic hmm. positivity surrounding teaching. It like, yeah, do like, I love my children. You're right. I would not teach them if you did not pay me. Sorry. Like I yeah. need a paycheck to where my wife and I can survive. That's so, right. So as you should, I mean, I mean, you're working hard. You're, you're bringing up the next generation and, and the toxic positivity, the fact that I feel bad for saying that, yes, I do work for money, like means that it's working on me. You know what I mean? I've, I've bought yeah. it in some way that like, I'm, you know, a martyr for the cause. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. So anyway, it just, it just makes me mad. It just makes me so mad because I don't know. I don't oh, know. I could, you... I could process thoughts better if my, my head hurts like yelling did not help my head at all like, well i i mean so i think one of the things that people don't realize is that just inaction is extraordinarily destructive to the educational system yeah. so even if um you know things aren't getting cut like a lot of people say well they didn't cut the budget this year that's good people don't realize that literally just the inability or, or i'm sorry the inaction of increasing wages or doing these things in the educational system are detrimental to the performance of said school district or, or state. Um, and unfortunately, there's been a lot of stagnation in education in America. Uh, so even when they're not cutting, cutting things out, worsening benefits in these things, even just staying stagnant in this, in this uh, field is terrible. It's yeah. Just I terrible. mean, the cost of living has gone up way more than what That's raise right. is. Um, and, you know, every year they're like, well, we're going to absorb your increasing insurance costs. I'm like, I don't care. Don't. How about you pay me more money and then I'll get I'll pay for the insurance costs. What, what, right. what, what with that? Like, give me more money. Like, right. and they're like, well, we don't have it. And part of it is true. The way education budget is is doled out like they get up. It's not a pool of money. There's like you get this much for this thing yes. for operations, this much for like maintenance, this much for tech. And so there may be a bunch of money sitting here in freaking maintenance because nothing needs maintaining, you know, like it's just yeah. sitting there. You can't give it to teachers. That's right. It's a lot. It's, it's all tied up. Correct. And my biggest up. problem and everyone's like, well, there's so many bad teachers. They should get rid of tenure. OK, we don't have tenure in Florida. Guess what? Um, it didn't fix Florida. So y'all getting rid of getting rid of tenure 11 years ago didn't fix Florida. Florida so, still sucks. So here's this question, because I know uh, like from firsthand talking to you that Florida kind of sucks. Uh, from We're education. Four, we are 42 out of 51. See, I th I read a thing the other day that said that Florida was sixth. And I was like, there's no way. <laughs> Someone lied to you. <laughs> they lie. It's, it's Florida, the world according six, to Briggs. Six in what? Pay? Starting pay? No, just in, in, in general, like education, quality of school. I was like, <laughs> that's not what I heard. I promise you. I promise you the, uh, <laughs> the governor has a special relationship with that publication. There's no, that's, that's, not, it's just not true. Like it's, it's, it's emphatically untrue. It's not true at all. We, we have terrible education here. It's a, it's an, uh, actually it's a YouTube channel. His name's uh world according to Briggs. He does like geography stuff, maps. I, I, I really like that stuff. I'm actually like really big into like, I would need to see, maps. I would need to see what, what, uh, I'll send it to you. You please. I want to look and see. You might what... like this channel. Actually. I, I really like his channel. Um, he's, he's like pretty, um, out there with some of the stuff he says though. And I'm always like, I don't think that's true, Yeah, but I don't know what metrics he's looking at. So uh, hang on. I, I'm trying to catch up in these comments. I didn't look. Yeah. I'm going to respond to downward dog. dog. Downward dog asked Jimmy, are you going to do an unhaul video before you have to move all of these books? Uh, so if that's something you guys are interested in, say it in chat. Uh, I was going to do a live stream. It'd be me and my wife and I would do a live stream of me packing up my books and we could talk about the books I'm unpacking. You guys can ask us questions or, or whatever. Um, if that's something everyone's interested in, we'll schedule a stream. Um, but I didn't want to just go live one night randomly and everyone be like, what, what, what is this content? What are you doing? So <laughs> please, please let me know if that's something you guys are interested in. Also, I will be doing a video with, uh, Kelsey. She just finished the Farseer trilogy last night, right? Did before she like it? Oh yeah. She loved it. Yeah. Big fan. Big, big fan. Um, if there's one thing that I have to say, Alan, is that you have such a ridiculous amount of support from this community. Oh, 100%. I'm reading these comments. Everybody's so nice. Y'all. Yeah, we, so we nice. love you, man. We really do. Y'all are so nice. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's just frustrating. Like things don't have to be the way they are. And the fact that we, as a, that we, as a society pretend that I 
do not run out in the fields draped in a red flag waving a sickle around like i don't like i i just don't i don't run out chanting you know the soviet national anthem it's not what i do but the fact that we pretend that if i didn't have a crap teachers union because my teachers union is garbage but i have one Mm -hmm. and florida has made florida literally literally just a month ago florida tried to pass a bill that said dues for the union can't be taken directly out of your paycheck Unlike every other thing that just direct deposits or direct pulls out of my paycheck, right? Hmm. Because a couple of years ago, they passed a bill that says if union, if the, the union membership dropped below 50%, the union's gone forever. So like, it's obvious what they're trying to do, but they're like, mm-hmm. well, people should be able to negotiate their own wages with their boss. Okay, two things. One, even if the union's gone, I still can't negotiate for my own freaking pay raise. Two, do you know what the union crappy as it is because it's crap i think they think i have like big teacher like maybe the new york (laughs) teachers union or like i'm a teamster somehow like no there's like six people all of whom teach here that are like hey guys please come to the meetings um it's literally just like the four of us there like if (laughs) like it's crap but that's what stops them because every year when we go to the bargaining table the district's like um we were really thinking and we're thinking um what if we gave you guys zero dollars this year as 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 a vote for a raise <laughs> how, how do you feel about that yeah the union is the one that says no like that's n- no and pretending that if the union wasn't there that the, the board would out of the goodness of their heart come to us and be like you know what guys we're gonna give you a big raise bull crap they're gonna give us zero dollars every year that's what they're gonna do but there's a new cure egg in the break room i don't want your stupid cure egg. <laughs> But the problem is they can do that because the money that they buy that cure egg with can't be used for teacher salaries. And God, and the thing is, guys, I don't even mind how much I work. I don't get paid enough for it. But the yeah. problem is, is our work is undermined. It's undermined. It, there's no account. Like we te- we say rigor and accountability, college and career readiness. No, we're not. No, we're not. Everything is undermined. Everything is undermined. And if our principal stands up for us, it gets undermined at the district level. Like they don't have any responsibility. There's no accountability for anything they do. Like trying to make them learn something is you think I'm trying to have them figure out how to turn lead into gold. Like guys, all I want you to do is learn 12 words. That's it. That's it. Why'd y'all all fail that? Why did y'all all fail that? Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, for me, you know, thinking about like, you know, people who would be educating my children, I think I would want them most focused on education and not worrying about, you know, whether or not they can make ends meet or if things are going to be cut. You know what I mean? It, it's strange that we don't take care of what I think is one of the most important aspects of society. Uh, it, it, it's bizarre. It's absolute madness how little like how little we, like we just don't we just don't value it ever and you know i teach an elective which already sucks and my buddy bell who is my best teacher friend he teaches elective too but he teaches engineering so mm-hmm. like all his money funnel in the bell like because it's just like oh stem like you know oh women in stem i'm like what if we start a hashtag women in classics oh nobody cares okay <laughs> like it's, it's, it's just so stupid it's actually it's it's just whatever it's just i don't know but i mean and and this last another thing that's been you know hellish there's been nothing but testing the last like three weeks i've had kids gone having like four ap tests a week where they they go and they sit for a three and a half hour exam they get 30 minutes off and then they go sit for immediately sit for another three and a half hour exam yeah i've never really understood the testing format i remember i remember even in school like i just was like i don't feel like this is a good barometer of anything i've been taught and of like you know what i've retained it's not it's so stupid never understood it yes but college board has a monopoly on the market and every ap test that we take we pay college board for we pay ninety dollars per exam at least it was like two years ago and then we get money if they we get money if they pass if they sit yeah it's it's mutually symbiotic like we need everybody to take it so that we'll get money and we're going to pay them money it's there's so much money in education none of it goes toward actually educating children none of it strange how that works 
Uh, Alan, do you enjoy Florida outside of the education system? I mean, I like where I live. I mean, because mostly because I don't like anywhere else. Um, I um, I know where I live. Like, I'm familiar with it. Um, it's hot, but that doesn't bother me as much as bothers most people. I like I like that it's not cold. I hate cold. Um, yeah. And I mean, no, I hate it now because there's too many people who are like, well, I'm not gonna be. I'm nice. There you go. <laughs> Games, bro. There's too many people who are like, I'm not, they're not going to tell me that I can't go out without a mask. And so all of them, because they work remotely and they make eight times what the average income here is, mm -hmm. but they work remotely. So they're taking their New York or DC salary. They're moving here where it doesn't cost a fraction of what it costs to live in those places. And so they can buy four, five, six houses sit yeah. on the beach while and here's what infuriates me jimmy and i hate that this becomes like people people do not people came here to talk about books they came here to listen to talk about books and here i am talking about the ills of society i i, I have a secret for you people what? came here because they want to hear about you we'll see i, I did not get a spatula that said you're a flipping good teacher this year Chicago. um <laughs> the city commissioner the city commissioner for panama city beach has an interview saying like oh yeah there's a bunch of people coming in and like you know, house prices are going up because they're moving in with these big incomes and they can afford to, you know, just snatch it up at whatever cost. And the reporter's like, what about the people who live here? Like, what about the people in Panama City, on Panama City Beach, who work on Panama City Beach? It's like, yeah, well, they can't afford to live here, but there's plenty of towns outside of it that they could afford and then drive in. It's like, I'm sorry if you are the city commissioner and you are saying that it's okay to run the residents out and they can drive to work? I'm sorry, I will vote against you if I live <laughs> on the beach. I don't, I live in town, but I'll vote against anybody that looks just like you. I'll tell everybody I know to vote against you. You are a douchebag, <laughs> and all you care about is stupid tourist money. You're a douchebag. No, it isn't right that residents are being driven out of their home yeah. by people who don't live here. Yeah. Uh, where I sorry, Jimmy, one more thing. Go ahead, get it. Yes. There's so much money. And yes, everyone can. Everyone can do, do all this stuff. That doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it right. You can't run residents out of where they live. I would agree. I would agree. Uh, the county I'm in, I think, has almost 50,000 people a year moving into it, um, which is insanity, if you think about it. Um, Yoda has a great question. So, Jimmy, if you could pull off one book off of that shelf behind you and hand it to Alan through your webcams. Uh, what would you pick? I would pick, I, I already have my answer, but I want to make sure. Um, obviously I want it to be something he hasn't read. Um, yeah, I'm going to pick grace of Kings by Ken Liu. Actually. Uh, I okay, think God. Alan, Oh All my right, God, start, Jimmy, you would love it. I, like I, it, I keep hearing that. I have not read a more Alan book in a very, very long time. Yeah. That's, that was high on my list. Oof. Um, because like I knew two people that read it. And then all of a sudden, everyone and their mom is reading it. And now I'm like, I guess it's going to fall farther down my list. No, Alan, it's so unrepresented, though. But, Come but on. Jimmy, but, I, but it's in my blood. It's like my DNA. I know, but it's, it's not it's, popular. It's so not popular. I know. It is It is in the small. The it, third it, book has like 600 ratings. Like, yeah. it, it, dude, it's, it hasn't really moved down. It's just too long. Mm. It is long because I today I looked, I said, how long how I'm in book three. And I said, how far am I? And I opened it. It was like 500 pages. Like, oh, I'm probably almost done. And I look, I'm like, oh, it's a thousand pages. It's madness. And then the oh, next I, one comes out I'm like, oh, man, it come out soon. I'm desperately trying to freaking catch up with these comments. Yeah, people are hopping. Uh, by the way, we have set a chatting with nuts concurrent record. I mean, we've never even come close to 100. At one point, I think we were at 162. So really, uh, everyone, thank you so much for the support. Also, I really wanted to shout out everyone that checked out my King uh, Killer video I did, the name of the win review. Um, I tried some extra stuff with that. Like I've never really done B-roll and I don't do a lot of editing, but I actually like tried new things in that video and it did very well. And uh, while I don't necessarily care too much about analytics, that was just cool to see. Um, and people being very supportive of that, whether they loved or hated the book, was really cool. So thank you, everyone, who checked out I that I saved video. it to my watch later, but I have watched almost no booktube recently. And I oh, I don't blame you. I feel so ashamed. Um, but tell me about Name of the Wind now that you read it. You would not like it. What? You would not like Name of the Wind. No, no, no. I've read it. I 
I like Name of the Wind a lot. Wait, you did? I've read both. Yes. I so I don't know anything then. I uh, I know nothing, Jon Snow, because I literally I was reading it, and I always just think about you when I'm reading books, and I go. Alan would hate this. <laughs> no, I know. I can see how you would get that. Absolutely. But there's something, and I don't like Patrick Rothfuss as a person. I think he's mean. But there is something very, very beautiful about the way he writes, especially the way he describes music. And I, it, like, it, it somehow speaks to me. And I'm sorry, the Chandrian crap from the beginning. It's pretty cool. Was the, it was this. And I'm, I, I read 2,000 pages. Like that book and the one that follows being like, I, where is the answer to the Chandrian? I got to know. I yeah. got to know. And that's what I said. I thought the writing was excellent. I thought sometimes it kind of failed the is it though test. Um, yes, which, I get that. Is it though? Like, um, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I, I got that from uh, Abercrombie's interview. I think it was with Daniel Green. And he said Abercrombie was speaking and he said that he would write these flowery sentences, you know, like the the diamond danced like a thousand seals on a water or some bs like that right and his mom would read it and be like did does it though <laughs> like and then he was like oh that's not true you're right and she always said to like be true to your readers uh so there were a couple times in the book where i thought like it was a little indulgent but i really enjoyed the writing i thought the world building was really good at like a deep personal level with the currency the monetary struggle of of koth is probably the coolest part about the book for me the, the, the university stuff is my favorite um I love the university stuff. I think the second book. Well, well, read the second book. Okay. <laughs> I, was, I was waiting. I was like, I think the second book, the second book is not as strong as the first book. I, I only know one person and that's Nick. Um, Nick, uh, where is he? Is he in the, I think he's no, in the, Nick, Nick, uh, yeah. Nick T. Yeah. Right. Nick, Nick likes the second book better. And it, it, it causes Klaus to go into a frothing, like just absolute rabid fury. Um, but Nick's the only one I know that likes wise man's fear better than the name of the wind. Yeah. I respect Nick. Cause, uh, Nick has, Nick has his opinions and they're strong and he, and he stands by him. I respect <laughs> it. But I, yeah, I really liked name of the wind. There um, is. I did not like, okay. I do not like the end and I'm not gonna spoil it here, but mm -hmm. the thing, the thing with the, the way that they solve like the last issue, the very large issue. I'm like, that's dumb. That is stupid. Like, I don't like, I, Anyway, I have hot takes about Denna, too. People are like, you don't understand Denna. I'm like, I do, and I don't like her. Sorry. She's unpleasant. <laughs> I don't like Denna. I hate her. I'm honestly just shocked um, that, that you like that book. Because I, I, I was even going to say it in my video. <laughs> I, no, I like it. I, li I like that book. Um, I, like the, I like the teachers. I love, I love the education stuff. I think that's, that's like uh, the academic stuff done really, really well that I like. So, Thank you. Uh, people that are... Um... Being very supportive, I appreciate it. And Neil actually brings up a really good point. He says, but Koth is indulgent in telling his story. And that's a that's a fair yeah. point. That's yeah. a very fair point. I think some of the pieces that seem obnoxious are are very in uh that that that's the intent, you know? Yeah, people that like that don't like Quoth, like I don't like him either. Like he's a he's a braggart. He's an arrogant like braggart, and he's smug, which is the least the worst kind of arrogant braggart. Um, yeah. but you know, you know who's worse? What's that guy's name? Alonzo, Antonio, what's that? Philip Chase? No. Oh. <laughs> Burn! Get wrecked, nerd. What is the dude's name in the book? The dude who is like, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -mm. Yeah, the dude who like, like wants to jack up his violin and stuff. That guy. Oh, um, Elmer Fudd. That's not his name. What's that guy's Shoot, name? You're right. It's not Elmer, is it? Ambrose. Ambrose, thank you. I hate that guy. That guy's that guy's worse. Yeah, he's butt cheeks. I don't like that guy he, at all. He is butt cheeks. He's total butt cheeks. He's dude. itchy butt cheeks. <laughs> Yo, Chaz wants to know if you like Slow Regard of Silent Things. Did you read it? The novella? I don't like Ari. I'm sorry. I don't like Ari. She's <laughs> <sighs> I just don't like her. Um, I mean, I think Rothfuss is a is a good writer, like period. So I mean it's good. I just I just don't like Ari. I'm just glad that I finally read it. And I said my, uh, uh me too. I'm not going to lie. I forgot that. Uh, I forgot. I forgot you hadn't read it. Yeah. It, it's one that I've just like not read for such a long time and on purpose almost. Um, there's, you know what? I understand why you don't read popular books. Like why you like reading bad books so much. 
<laughs> no, I get it because whenever you, um, you know, read a book that's very, very popular and you're last of the party, um, it's almost not fun in a way because no matter what you do, you're going to have people telling you that you're dumb. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, I loved it. It's the worst book ever written. Yeah. Um, I hated it. It's the best book ever. And which, uh, to be fair, um, I think our audiences don't necessarily do that all the time. Um, I did have a comment that I thought was hilarious. And I don't generally highlight negative comments because I don't care. But someone commented on my name at the wind review because I mentioned first law briefly. He said, you like first law? Three question marks. Really? Three question marks. I will never trust you again. <laughs> I got. OK, so Jimmy, like <laughs> this goes back. This goes back to my original point about the teacher thing. Why? Do, like, I don't understand what is wrong with your life. <laughs> that you need to watch someone's video. It's not like talking like you're in a conversation, whatever. Like I bad mouth, you know, I bad mouth that poor old man who has been working for 40 years in a factory. And that's not kind, <laughs> but it's not like I watched his video about working in the factory for 40 years, for 40 hours, a, 40 hours a week. And then in the midst of a bunch of people talking about like, oh, good for you. Thank you. Backbone of the country. I said, well, as a teacher, I work way more than you. You're old. You stink. Guess what? World War II was 90 years ago. Like, I don't understand what goes through people's minds when that's what they do. Like, it's just rude. Well, so I, I took no offense. I honestly thought it was hilarious. I actually responded to the comment. Ha, 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 ha. Because I thought it was, I genuinely was belly laughing. My favorite part about that comment was, is that he doesn't trust me anymore. And all I could think of is like, like, this is a best selling fantasy series. Like, it's fine not to like it or, or whatever. But like to say that I like it, it's like, you, you like first, who likes first law? Like, yeah, I don't know, everybody. millions of people. <laughs> I, I got this comment on my Discworld tier list thing. And I have never seen pe more people would be in their bonnet. I thought people who like Discworld were nice. They're not. <laughs> most of them are but also you have the people who like really think that they're hot crap like because they like discord like oh i understand sir terry no you don't sir terry would have hated you and your attitude <laughs> because like dude left the comment saying like like oh well um you're rating uh I, how can i trust your opinion um how can i trust your opinion at all when you're uh when you're giving you're giving ratings to books you haven't read yet and I said in the video, in the video, I'm like, okay, I haven't read these particular books because I've read most of Pratchett's uh, bibliography, but not all. When I got to a book I hadn't read, I said, I have not read this. I am going to rank it based on what I think I'm going to like, and then I'll come back and change it after I've read them. Which is fun. I, That's a cool I one. know. And I don't know how that nullifies my opinions on the ones I have read. That doesn't make any sense at all. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Why are people like that? Uh, honestly, more... honestly, I thought I think it's like the funniest shit. I love it, dude. I don't know why people are like that. Um, I don't know, Terrence. I need to get to Tchaikovsky's um sci-fi stuff, which I haven't read like at all. But I'm so behind on the Tchaikovsky crowd I'm supposed to read. Um, so everyone says it's amazing. I need to read it. Yeah, that's that's your guy. That's like his landmark thing. Yeah, I know. You need to read some books. Like you picked like. The, the books that I've told you to read, you've picked the worst ones. Like you haven't picked any of the ones that like everyone likes. You picked the one that like that I hadn't even read. So right, well, and then right. you picked Emperor's Blade, which nobody liked. All right. Well, Emperor's Blade was not my cup of tea. Well, you read Winter, Winter, friggin' Winter King. Hey, that was good. The Warlord Chronicles is one of the best trilogies ever written. How about that? Boom. Like, I, leg agree. I legitimately love that series it's, so much. It's so good. Like. I, I just finished my audio of whatever I was listening to. Oh, a nonfiction book about the office. And I was like, what do I want to read now on audio? I almost, I almost put on winter King again, but I'm like, I need to read something else, but <laughs> I almost put winter King back on. Bro. It's so good. And freaking uh, Jonathan Keeble, um, or Keeble, Keebler. Yeah. Jonathan, Jonathan Keeble. Yep. Jonathan Keeble is amazing. So good. Uh, Sean Cole says long price quartet ended up being one of the best series I've read and shadow campaigns is off to an amazing start. Alan's unpopular series strategy seems to work. I mean, I mean, first of all, I, I, I am tickled pink that everyone's loving shadow campaigns. I do not think everyone's opinion is going to remain the same when we hit book two. Book one is very, very different than book two. And so it just depends on why everyone really likes book one. And then book two starts something different. And then books three and four kind of 
get it back to where, where we're supposed to be. Um, but book two is, it's, it's, it's fairly unpopular, but I, I'm, I really liked it. Everyone's liking thousand names. That, that was, that's unexpected. great. Um, second LPQ is amazing. Third, I, I am on book five or I will, I I'm on the spider war. Like I finished the first four of dagger and coin. So I will finish next month dagger and coin. Finally. Yeah, I uh, I'm I'm glad to see you finally doing it. I need to read Long Price Quartet. Also, Angela, uh, have a great night and congratulations. Angela, congratulations on your doctorate. Yes, Doctor Angela. Dr. Congratulations. Angela. A round of applause. I wish I need a soundtrack. I think I need to get like you know like sound effects. It needs to happen. You need a, yeah soundboard. <laughs> I need a soundboard. I really do. Wow. <laughs> <clears throat> there are quite a few people in the chat who do not like first law, which I, by the way, I'm fine with. I don't have a problem if you don't like first law. I just thought it was funny that this person thought it was inconceivable that someone did. <laughs> Maybe he was following you because he thought you were a, um, I, like that. He thought you were like a hipster. I, Maybe he mistook you for me. I, <laughs> ben brown says jimmy when are you starting aspect emperor uh i would like to get to it before the end of the year but you can't can't quote me on that, Is that baker's um, second trilogy yeah uh, yeah i think it's a court yeah it's a quartet i have all four oh. um and i also got the long price quartet the one with two books per book and i got what? both of them guess what alan they don't match no they don't suck it what the but, but why like <laughs> because they hate you and they hate me they hate me specifically they hate, they hate you by proxy <laughs> i mean i i can't believe that they said hey this is a great idea we'll combine the two books they're short and we'll do a little set it's like oh duology kind of thing oh, okay and they were like yeah but we're not gonna make a match <laughs> daniel abraham has easily some of the worst publishing like as far as like the deals he gets um, well, now that he's with Orbit, it's it's it seems to be okay. But yeah, that first publisher was a uh, uh, rough. My goodness. Yeah, I wanted to read uh, Django Wexler. Um, I just couldn't fit it in. But I, I've been very keen to get to a thousand names. Yeah. Uh, I was a little nervous if I did a next one and I and I didn't like it. Like that would I I, I would. No, I know. Oh, no, thousand names is good. Um, I I don't like. I uh, like. I didn't love. Yes, Guns of the Dawn is so good. I didn't love um, Wexler's the start of Wexler's other series, um, mostly because it's, it's largely based on Star Wars and I don't like Star Wars really. Um, like really, it's fine. But, yeah. um, so I didn't, I'm gonna answer that in a second, Christian. Um, so I was like surprised, like he, he writes like, like he has a, he has a YA series in between these two. He does? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think he like leans that way, but I freaking, Shadow Campaigns does not. Shadow Campaigns is straight up like, like there have been people who are reading the battle scenes, like some of the battle scenes who have, now I, I don't know which scenes they're talking about. I need to read the book again, who have compared it like favorably to some Malazan battle scenes. And I'm like, that's wow. insane. Um, they are very, very good. Like some of his war scenes uh, are comparable to like Cornwall, um, Cornwall, war scenes in his sharp books in the Napoleonic Wars, because this is the point of wars, essentially. Yeah. Uh, but fantasy. Um, so the shadow campaigns are good. I, I can definitely, I, I would, I would, I would say you'd like the first book if you ever get around to it. Um, I can say that with pretty much, with pretty confidence. Um, the characters are good. Yeah, I actually own the series. I, a friend two years ago bought me for him on nice. Kindle. Very so cool. I, I've, I've been wanting to get to him. It's just one of those things where I never know where to fit it in. You know? Yeah. Um, that's awesome, Christian. I just saw that you um, what did you just complete? Did you just, did you just finish Skype? Or are you about to go to Skype? He's at chapter 300. I, I don't know that I watched the anime, so I literally have no idea. Oh, okay. Right. Um, so I'll know the arc. Um, no, Jimmy wouldn't like it. <laughs> now I want to like it. No, I mean, who, it, it. The thing is, it takes too long to get going. Uh, Jimmy don't have time for that. Um, and it's not, it is. Honestly, I don't really understand why anyone likes one piece. I know why I like one piece. I don't really know why everybody else likes it. <laughs> um, I like it because I like pirates and I like uh, uh, Luffy's, you know, loyalty and incorruptibility and complete, you know, <laughs> just complete singular focus. And I like pirates. And I think the bad guys are cool. Like Crocodile. Like Crocodile is one of my favorite villains in that whole thing. I love Crocodile. Um, Christian said he's finishing Sky Plea. Okay, so he's finishing Skype. Yeah, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. You're you're with Enter. You're with Enter. Okay. Um, 
And I think, and so, yeah, so I really like One Piece, but I, I've, I mean, I've been watching One Piece since they were in, you know, Alabasta. So mm-hmm. I've like kind of grown up with One Piece. Yeah, so that makes following sense. Following along with them. Um, I think I think later in the series, it loses, I mean, it gains a lot as far as lore and story, but it loses some like, like smaller character moments because, and that, and I, I describe One Piece like a D and D game where it begins very small with small stakes. Um, and then gradually, you know, as the power creep, you have to have bigger and bigger stakes to be able to fight the stronger and stronger enemies. And so it eventually becomes, you know, world spanning and there's not enough time for those smaller character moments that there are earlier, earlier in the series. Um, but I still, I still like it. I'm, Almost caught up. I just got to Wano. I just started the Wano arc. So that's a big series to conquer. It's huge. It's freaking like, I don't know how anyone, I mean, I guess if you're reading the manga, you can read it fairly quickly, Mm -hmm. especially if you're not paying for it. Um, But the TV show, which is my exclusive, that's the exclusive way that I consume one piece. It's it's 1100 episodes. That's insane. (laughs) That's, That's too much for your boy. I can't do it. I can't do it, but I love the anime. The, I think the the seiyu in the um, anime, the voice actors are phenomenal. They are phenomenal. So um, Jennifer wanted to know uh, if there's a start date for Wars of Light and Shadow by Janie Warts. Um, so June is where we're going to read book one. We're going to take the entire month of June to read book one. I've already started because June I'll be moving. So I know it's going to be a crazy month. Like I'm not going to get as much reading done. Uh, so I'm reading it very slowly. I'm at the first 100 pages and I'm enjoying myself immensely. Um, but we'll see, we'll see what it has. Uh, and I, I'm excited to talk about that with uh, Critical Dragon and Philip Chase. It's going to be uh, pretty fantastic. Uh, someone said, is Shadow Campaigns the Flintlock Fantasy? Yes. yes. Shadow yeah. Campaigns is one of the two most famous Flintlock Fantasies. We got the Powder Mage, which is by far, by far the most uh, well-known. It's the best, yeah. right? Powder Mage, no. No, not even, not even a little bit. Shadow <laughs> Campaigns is so much better than... Um, than now, I have not read the entire Powder Mage series. I've only read book one. But I think Thousand, Thousand Names is an infinitely superior book to, to Promise of Blood. Um, Blood. But I, I wish more people would read the Shadow Campaigns who liked Flintlock Fantasy. Um, it's uh, Oh, I, I, I think I just answered that answered him in the chat. Um, so Tall Guy, I think Age of Ash was my second favorite of his book ones. Um, uh, I think Dagger's Dragon's Path was my least favorite book one. Really? Um, yeah, there's a there's a huge chunk in the middle where like I'm just like, what is going on in this book? Like this book needs to pick it up. Like Patrick and I both said that if we did not know it was Abraham, we might have put the book down. Um, the wow. first time we read it, the I, second I'm time a I read it, well, the second time I read it when I knew it was going on, uh, I don't know where what I was talking about, but you know, the first time, um. You were talking about Flintlock fantasy, and we were talking about how Promise of Blood is the best Flint. No, I mean I don't. I don't know what I was talking about when I said that it was. So- oh, oh, word. Okay. okay. After I'd read it once. Yeah, I, I, I'm a weird. I'm a one of the weirdos. I thought Dragon's Path by Daniel Abraham was really good. Like I was That's sucked nasty. in. I was just sucked in. That's awesome. And Getter is an incredible character. Getter. Okay. Dude, Getter's up I'm there. I'm talking with my my friends who have read LPQ. And I'm talking about Getter versus a character in LPQ. Well, there, there are there are a bunch of great characters in LPQ, but there's one specific about um, that I'm comparing, like I'm just comparing to Getter um, and trying to compare them because they're different, but have kind of you know similar aspects. And I'm just like, these people are so tragic. Like <laughs> <laughs> Abraham is just, I mean, he's just fantastic. He's just fantastic. Um, Getter's a fantastic character. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, oh, I'm gonna try and catch up. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> there's so many people. Oh my god! I know we need to go back to like 40 people watching. Get one one comment every three minutes. I never thought. Uh, a little only almost a little over a year ago, my first chat with nuts. I think I had like 18 or 20 people, and I was like, "This is amazing." It's only a year ago. Yeah. Crap, son. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Also, remember the entirety of Long Price Quartet is shorter than the crippled god wait really the entire thing is like 1200 pages the whole series total hmm. like total. i mean i know it's small <laughs> I, I 
it's one of those ones I'm just going to pick it up and start. It's like name of the win. Like I just had like this little like weak window and I was like, I'm just going to smash this. And I just went yeah. in and, See, and I that's, had what, that's what I've actually been doing. I have like a little window and I've just been like picking up a little thing. Cause like I can mood read. What? Well, look, okay. Look, look, let me, let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and, and, and let me, let me modify my statement. Um, okay. no, no one has to say they're a mood reader anymore, guys. Guess what? Apparently everyone is, everyone's a mood reader. Like, so we don't have to say it. Let's just assume that everybody's a mood reader because it's true. Like, I, as I said, I didn't read anything in April. And I was like, I was going to read, what was I going to read? I was going to read something. And I'm like, I have not been in the mood to read. I need to pick up something that I really want to read, which was yeah. before, Widow's House, book four of, of, of Dagger and Coin. So good. And, and that got me into it. And then when I finished it, I went and reread, I re I read, two KJ Parker novellas. I reread one really quickly and then read another one in a day. And now I'm on that third Parker novella that I'm reading with Zara. And so that kind of got the juices flowing of like, okay, this is what reading is like. Uh, it's uh, so yeah, so it's, it's good stuff. Um, yes. Lots of, lots of, lots of blowing up heads muskets in with muskets. Oh yeah. Like it's, it's brutal. <laughs> Joanna, someday I like that. <laughs> she said she can't. That's so passive aggressive. Look at <laughs> look at look at Joanna being passive aggressive. Just flexing. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so out of your two favorites, which seem to be uh Chufkowski and which I'm probably saying wrong, um, and Parker, if I if you had to recommend me one of them to read a novella from, which one would it be? Okay, so Tchaikovsky has a fantastic novella called Ogres. Um, That's that new, it, right? Yeah, it just came out in March, and it was it is excellent, just excellent. Okay. Um, but Parker has a novella called Purple and Black, which I've heard it's really good. It it has it essentially it's just it's like ninety pages. Uh, Ogres is like two hundred, like one hundred and eighty, something like that. That's not bad. Um, but it um it showcases everything that Parker is good at really cynical worldviews, um, funny, like funny dialogue, but it's not like, it's not written to be a comedy. It's just like, these people are just, they're just funny. You know how you laugh with your friends and you're yeah. not like trying to be a comedy. They're just, it's just funny. His characters are mostly basically all really, really intelligent, which I like. Um, he has this world that he doesn't explain anything about. It's just this quasi like, it, it, it's like our world with like Roman names with stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so it's based like on Renaissance slash Rome, slight kind of kind of setting. Um, and he doesn't tell you where anything is. He just starts throwing out place names and you, you're not supposed to care. You just go like, like he definitely feels like you're in a world. Um, and it just is so... Every time I read Parker, I'm just like, I am so sad about my life because <laughs> it's it's not uplifting at all. They're all so just like comically bleak. I um, like that stuff, though. I, that's why I think you would like Parker, especially you remember the company you heard me talking about. That's his bleakest one that I've that I've read. Th that's the one that has stuck out to me when I'm hearing you talk about that. I've been like, I feel like that one would work for me. Yeah. And so Purple and Black just kind of highlights a lot of the things that he does really well in his novels. Yeah. Um, oh, bye, Tiago. I didn't see him leave. Um, it was like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> no. Well, I'm behind. <laughs> oh, it's all good, I'm man. Behind. I really like this question from Alex. Tall guy reads says, Alan, if you had to read one extremely popular science fiction fantasy fantasy series, it's redundant. Uh, you haven't read and put everything else down. Which would you choose? If I had to put one and read a popular one, if I had to put it down and read a popular one, um, bloody heck, I don't know. Um, maybe, uh, I mean, does Mistborn Era 2 count as really popular? Ah, I, yes. I, I like gunslinging. Like, that's the problem is I like gunslinging. Um, maybe that one. Um, maybe Stormlight. Maybe First Law. Um, it would not be Greenbone. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, those are the things. I think those are the main, like, huge ones I haven't read, maybe, that I, I guess that I want to read. Are those... Are there other really 
extreme does robin hopkins extremely popular uh, i mean yes in our little corner but like in the grand scheme of things i would say that no but so there's a series called monarchies of god is that the, is that hawkwood's voyage i have that first book i really want to read monarchies of god um i don't know if that's the same book you're talking about uh oh my gosh i'm back where christian said he's finishing skype yeah oh my god oh i'm way ahead of you bro I'm, I'm way not. ahead of you. Give me a second. I'm scrolling. Tanner says, talk. <laughs> Alan, I feel like I'm one of the only other people who love uh, who love books of Babel. Loved all your videos on the series. Still think about the ending months later. I agree. I agree. Um, I, everyone in my Discord likes books of Babel. Um, I, I guess they're afraid to say they don't. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not it's not explosively popular. I wish it was. I mean, it's weird. It's weird. I understand. Um. I love books of Babel. Like again, Sin Linus Ends was my first like series I hadn't read that I read on booktube. And I just, I mean, I just like how weird it is. And I like the, I like Bancroft's writing style and mm -hmm. um, I really, writing. really like Edith and Sen Lin, um and their character arcs and stuff. So um, I was sold. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. I actually feel like uh, even though I bounced off Sin Linus Ends, I think Bancroft's a very good writer. Yeah. I think, I think, I mean, I think, People can acknowledge that, like, be like, "Hey, this person's good. She's not my thing." For his debut, I mean, it's insane. Uh, yeah. Ben Brown, end of Tyrant's Law was great. Yes, I I such agree. a good ending. I agree. That's the, in my opinion, that's the peak of the series. Actually, I should have put my One Piece shirt on if I knew I was going to talk about One Piece. Yeah, what in the world? I have a One Piece shirt over there. And Austin says, talk. "I'm glad more BookTube is considering manga with the likes of One Piece and Berserk." Yeah, I just like storytelling. You know. Um, this isn't always it'll never be a all manga channel, but there's always going to be some sort of uh, dipping my toes into that medium. And I have a lot of uh, a lot of fun talking with my best friend, Andrew, on dudes talking manga here on the channel. Um, has anyone here read Saga? Have you read Saga, Alan? Saga looks weird. Like, I think it, I'm going to try it. It looks bizarre. I'm not like everyone thinks because I'm loud. Like I'm like I like really like weird stuff. I just finished saying I like sinless sense. Um, I read sinless sense. My wife made me. Oh, I, I, at the beginning I was like, I let my wife pick uh, Christina, pick a book uh, every month. And that's just the first one she picked. Um, and that's what I did. But saga, I'm just, I don't know what it's about. And every time I hear people, like everyone tells me something different and it's always weird. And I'm just like, what? Like, I also don't read a ton of manga. Um, I'm currently reading 20th century boys uh with patrick and sarah yeah so and, they love it yeah and i am two-thirds of the way through that and i'm waiting i think we're supposed to do a video about that second arc um at some point um but it's excellent but i watched his other thing monster someone asked earlier um if if i thought you'd like monster i do think you'd like monster um the anime it is about it is like a psychological like thriller like inside the mind of a, of a serial killer it is excellent that sounds um, like something i would like yeah. I, I, I don't know what that says about me but no it is it is excellent i watched the anime again i didn't read the i didn't read the manga but i watched the anime it was excellent yeah uh matt allen has not read any robin hob um and I if, need you DNF, to. if you dnf the sass prince and it's been a few years why not give it another shot i i think that she's fantastic my wife just finished farseer and loved it so she yeah, I, like everyone is waiting on like with bated breath and whether or not I'm going to like Robin Hobb because the thing is, is like, you know, I'm known for my distaste of, of, of ponderousness, you know, where everyone, where we're talking for an like what, like, what's the point? Like, get to the point about what we're talking about, please. Um, but I also like, I love Long Press Quartet. Like Long Press Quartet is, you know, and, and KJ Parker, which they didn't like, there is no way less happens in a Robin Hobb book than in a KJ Parker book. Like, there's no way. There's no way. Um, but it's just, they're just so well written that I'm just engaged the whole time. And so, every, like, there are people who think I'm going to love Robin Hobb, and there's people who think I'm going to hate Robin Hobb. And it's kind of, you know, yeah, Schrodinger's Hobb. I have no idea, honestly, where it will, will, it will land with you. I would say the fact that you liked Name of the Wind is maybe... The fact that like you could stand Koth because Fitz can be a little frustrating. Yeah. Um, we'll see. I don't know. And you'll read it whenever you're done with Soldier Son or whatever you're doing. <laughs> Soldier Son. Has Alan read oh, Sun Eater? Oh my gosh. So Sun Eater is, is, is something else that I'm boycotting because everyone keeps telling me to read Sun Eater. <laughs> Listen, Ma Matthew, if it's a popular series, like you're like, oh, I really like this. And a lot of the people are talking about it. And there's a lot of community around it. And the, the, the spirits are high. Alan hasn't read it. Correct. Sun Eater sounded so interesting. And it's then so everyone's talking about it. I'm like, I'm not even reading that now. Um, no, really, Sun Eater is the most requested book 
by my patrons. So I'm actually spinning it again at the beginning of June. June 1, I'll spin my wheel again. And one-tenth of the wheel, there's a 10% chance of it landing on Sun Eater every time because everyone uses one of their freaking choices as Sun Eater. <laughs> um, the problem with Sun Eater and the reason that I'm not going to read it soon unless it hits the wheel is because it's too long. It's too long. It violates the year of the short, the year of the short book. Later, Christian. See you, um, Christian. It's, it's just too, it's too long. Like the first book is like 800 pages. Um, so what what's what all sci-fi have you read? I know that you've done. Sci-fi. I've read um I've read Hyperion, right? I read Hyperion. I long ago read Fall of Hyperion. Yeah. I've read. There's an excellent book called Fire Upon the Deep by Werner Vinge that I really like. I read a bunch of the Ender books. Um, when I was younger, um, what else have I read? Sci-fi. I, I was just wondering, like, if if you in general like enjoy sci-fi, or is it something? I do. Like- I just don't really reach for it a lot. Um, I, I I I am behind. I've pulled a Tagana on my patron wheel from last month because, again, like I said, in reading, um, and that's a sci-fi book, Shards of Honor, uh, the first in the Vorkosigan saga by uh, Lois McMaster Bajold. Oh yeah, I really want to read uh, yeah. books books from Lo- uh, is it Lois? Is yeah, it, is Lois okay. McMaster Bajold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so I want to read that, but again, like I ran out of time, so that's on the list. And I always, I always read my patron books. Always. It took me six months to get through to do Tagana because I ran out of time and then waited from June till December to pick it back up. But I did read it, and so I'm going to. I'm definitely going to get through it. Um, but uh, normally, I don't read a ton of sci-fi. Uh, I have some that I want to read. I know Tchaikovsky was probably one that you wanted to. to yeah, I definitely want to read Children at Time, just because everyone loves it so much. Yeah, I, I really um, enjoy sci-fi. I just did Project Hail Mary. It was my Patreon pick of the month off my wheel. And how, how uh, was that? Because I, I just got that book. Uh, fantastic. No. Uh, I'm shocked that you that you I, honestly, dude, you want another audio book? That's the one. Really? Oh, the audio for Project Hail Mary is one of the best. Okay. One of the, and there's a reason and I can't tell you, but I'm tell, uh, it's it's fantastic. I would say that that book is best done as an audio book, possibly. Hold on. Oh, so is the Obsidian Past series, is that the Beyond Redemption? Like, is that his? Mm-hmm. Because that is what I have to read next month. Because the last time I spun it, I got Michael R. Fletcher's Beyond Redemption. Oh, I actually just got the first two books of that in the mail from Nicholas, one of my patrons. And he actually also sent me the first edition of uh, Saga. That's why I'm thinking nice. about trying. Very cool. Yeah. So shout out to Nicholas. Um, I like, uh, I think it's Bitha Lynn's question. Do either of you have something outside of sci-fi fantasy genre that you absolutely love or another genre that you turn if you need a break from science fiction? Uh, um, books? To see. I, if we're talking about like, I have authors. So Stephen King, which mm, sometimes meshes into what, what, what we would call fantasy. Um, Cormac McCarthy is now, I've read three books from him. And I think Cormac McCarthy is maybe my favorite writer. Maybe. So I just want to keep reading his books. For now. Um, I uh, I like uh, Cornwell, like historical fiction. Um, yeah, that's I true. Like Cornwell, like shark, his shark books, and I also I love reading. Um, like I've been like whenever I want to break, I put on an audio or read like a like a, a period, like detective book. Because uh, I don't know why there aren't any like. There's not, there's, I like historical fiction set in Rome, and uh, none of them are like exceptional, but they're good. And they're fun because I know about Rome, so they're fun. So currently, I'm having a blast. I'm reading Alexander the Great. Nice. Alexander the Great. <laughs> this is what I'm writing my slides for my class for. And also, the actual Alexander the Great, Arian, the landmark Arian, uh, which is all the campaigns. This is like the actual like, ancient. Which one did you recommend to me? Of what? You, you recommended me a nonfiction book about Rome because I told you, I said, I would like to know. Rise of Rome. Rome. Rise of Rome by Anthony Everett. Yes, and, this guy, but a different book. And Julius Caesar, right? There's a book just Jul- called Julius Caesar. Caesar by Philip Freeman. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's, that's actually a- that's those two authors right there, but just books about Alexander. Okay, great. Yeah, because I, I, you know, I know general stuff about Rome, but I've always wanted to dive in. Oh, um, there's there's such such good starting places. I just love fiction so much, <laughs> and I watch a lot of documentary and history videos, like. I prefer um, like YouTube content, long form documentaries on yeah. on nonfiction stuff for whatever reason. Um, I'm loving the fact that I'm seeing a bunch of um, saga 
love. Is it Saga? Saga. 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 Oh. Um, because I I think it looks weird, but like I'm down to get weird. So uh, that might be something that I will be covering here on the right. channel. Well, two things. Um, Holy hearted Melissa says she loves how Alan pronounces manga. Kids yell at me when they hear me say it like that. That's true. Um, and people try to correct me. Here's the thing. If I'm going to say manga, I need to say anime because those are pronounced the same. Anime. Like, that A vowel is an A. Ah. So if you're going to say manga, you have to say anime. But no one says anime. Everyone wait, says wait, it's, it is pronounced anime. anime. It is pronounced anime then. Yes. Right? Like it's anime. But no one says anime. Everyone says anime. Yeah, so I'm not going to walk around saying manga and then anime. And the thing is, I study Japanese. I know that it's manga, but I'm not over there. I'm here. <laughs> so I'm going to call it manga because I'm because I'm American. And, uh, you know, anime sounds like someone like if someone says that, it sounds like they sniff their own farts. You know what I mean? Like, like they're a big I, fan of their own brand. Like you know? I've never I've just I mean, some people probably do. And maybe, you know, maybe they do. But I, it's, it's just not me. And also, I have to think about it if I'm going to say, you know, uh, uh, manga. I've said manga for so long, like so long. <laughs> so I don't want to. I don't want to fix it. But people yell at me all the time, and I'm like, I know, I know, it's, guys, I know it's manga. I know it's fine. Like I know I'm pronouncing it wrong. I'm okay with it. Like I'm, I'm, you know, like it's I, like I, I think Malazan wrong. I was just say it's like Malazan. Yeah. Like I, I talked to Stephen Erickson, who knows <laughs> I'm pronouncing it wrong, and I know he knows it. And I say, it no, anyway. it was amazing. You go, I know I'm saying it wrong, but just let me get to the point. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what? I'm like, it's, it's Malazan. Like, sorry, whatever. I'm, I'm gonna say Malazan. And then um, I think someone asked where to start with Parker. Yeah, someone did ask that earlier. Um, folding knife is my is my suggestion. Is that a novella? No, it's 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 a it's a novel. Um, the novella Purple and Black is is hard to find. You have to get the ebook of the novella collection, so it's like seven bucks. Um, but Folding Knife was my first Parker, and anyone I have told to read Folding Knife first, not one person has regretted it. Every single person who's read Folding Knife has liked it. Every okay. every single one that I've read. I will trust you. I w then if I'm gonna ever start Parker, I'll start there. Foley knife is it's good. It's good. Um, Amanda Dang, Jake's, Jake's here. What up, Jake? Oh, Jake. Jake's been here. He said Jade Legacy is phenomenal. Oh, wait, uh, Jake Bishop, I assume, right? Yes, I'm main character thing. Okay. Uh, Amanda said Jimmy is Kelsey going on to live ships. Uh, yes, yeah, she is going to read um some other books that are way worse. Um, and then she's going to read live ships. She's what, uh, what is she reading that's way worse? Colleen Hoover. I don't know what that is. And Sarah J. Mass. So I do know what that is. Kelsey, book two. Kelsey, talk to her, Alan. Kelsey, don't do that. Talk to her, Alan. Like, don't Let's do go. that. I, I need. Why? <laughs> like, okay, let me quote. Let me quote the great, one of the greatest orators, and you know, and 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 uh, attorneys, solicitors of our time, Cicero, qui bono, to the good of whom, <laughs> to what good, for whose good. Like what? What? What good is it going to do? You should not read Sarah J. Mass, and instead burn it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's Kelsey's corner. She finally has some bookshelves. She can do that's it. awesome though. That's that's awesome. I said, go nuts. You know, yeah. I yeah, read my students read crap that I hate all the time, and I make fun of them, and I say, guys, I may hate with the crap that y'all are reading, but I'm so reading. glad that y'all are freaking reading. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Keeps I'm me gonna, and you in business. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, why, why am I going to be mad about someone freaking reading something? Uh, Stuart, Winnowing Flame is still on my TBR for this year, and I will be starting that this year. Um, you know, Have as long as I like it, I will continue. Did you read that? No, it's by Jen Williams. So uh, it's it's on my must read for this year. I'm really excited about it. Gotcha. Uh, it sounds like Matthew will be joining your patron just to add Sun Eater. <laughs> oh, no. Don't do that. There's too much Sun Eater on my, on my wheel. I'm almost caught up. Oh, yeah. Fire upon the Deep is awesome. Yeah. You're like the first person that really mentioned that to me. And ever since then, I keep hearing about it. That's because it. I, look, I uh, my buddy, my buddy Finlay, because he's a super sci fi nerd. He's read like all the sci fi. Mm -hmm. He handed it to me and told me and told me it was really good. And I read it and I was like, this is a, this is a weird freaking book. This is so good. And um, then I mentioned it once in, in like um, I mentioned it on YouTube a couple times. And uh, Kai had, went went and read it and really likes it, which is awesome. That's cool. And now, you know, Jay Rogue there says he likes it. And that's like, I'm hearing people like this freaking book. And I'm like, yes. Uh, Hyperspace wants to know if, if Alan is a Sith Lord. Hyperspace. Uh, Am I? Those are, my, those are my dudes over there. Their channel is blowing up. They had a uh, YouTube short hit a million views. So if you're into Star Wars, 
go check out hyperspace hangout. They are a long, really? they've been around, they've been around a long time and they're finally getting the credit that they deserve. I mean, they're two of the best creators that I've ever talked to and met. Um, they're the same gentlemen that run heroes of the horn for a wheel time and bend the knee for a song of ice and fire. And Oh, that's awesome. Give me a second. Le- I'll, I'll go sub to that. Yeah. They're legitimately two of my favorite people. So they have a great community over there as well. Reading Rainbow, uh, best I name love reading me. Rainbow. Yeah, me too. He's a great I, guy. He, he made a comment earlier that I was making bro sound like an insult. Never for you. Never, never, you. never for you, Fred. No, no, no. I would never go reading Rain, bro. No, no, no. Never you? Um, he said, I think y'all would like Alistar uh, Alistair Reynolds. That's and, um, Revelation Space, yeah, right? Pushing Ice and stuff like that. I've heard it's really I good. have Pushing Ice on my list. That's actually, yeah, I do uh, too. Book of his that's that I think I'm most interested to read. I really like Sun Eater as oh, yeah, the audiobooks are fantastic. Um Sam Oh, I'm ahead of you. Yes, I'm ahead of you in the car. Are you really? Oh, shit, yes, yeah. finally. Have you guys read Blood Meridian? I have not. Uh it's my next uh Cormac McCarthy book. So um, true story. I have never read Cormac McCarthy, but Christina read has read The Road. She had to read it in college as an English major. Master. Um, and that is not that is not my lovely wife's kind of book, like at all. It's it is, very sad. It's just not. Um, so I've never read Cormac McCarthy. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I just read Child of God, which is the most demented thing I've ever read in my life. I don't know if I enjoyed it, but the writing was beautiful. Um, I mean, I enjoyed it, but like it's severely messed up. Which one? Uh, Child of God. It's like 170 pages of just pure misery. Uh, essentially, it's about a serial killer in Tennessee in the Appalachia Mountains um, in like the uh, 30s. I can't remember what time period it is, but it's, it's somewhere around this. I think it might have been after World War II, but it, it's demented. Um, it's a character study about a serial killer. I mean, it's not fun to read. Uh, there's oh, a neat. lot of things that make your heart hurt in that book. Like it makes the road look like a, you know, a rock festival, like an uplifting EDM concert. I'm caught up. Are you really? Yes. Success. And the problem is, is now, now I have to use the potty. And refill my drink. I know, but if I go, I'll be behind in the comments again. Nah, you'll be all right. All right. You'll be all right. All go right. for it. Jimmy, entertain the masses. <laughs> I'm going to refill two things. Alan's trusting me to steer this ship. Do you guys think I can do it? I don't know. Get out of here, Jimmy. You're <laughs> <messing> the best. <laughs> um, Saying foreign words in your own dialect is the way to go. It's weird to change your dialect or just pronounce a foreign word, but just universally, we'd all go mad. Interesting. Um, I've definitely um, mispronounced a lot of things in Berserk, and before we started doing them as live shows, I heard about it a lot. Let me tell you. <laughs> it's brutal. I just nip it in the bud. In the video, I'm just like, look, I know I'm saying it wrong. You don't got to go in the comment and get all mad. Like, I understand that it's wrong. You telling me is not going to be new. I am telling you now. I know it's wrong. Please do not yell at me in the comments. Yeah, they still yelled at me. That sucks. <laughs> you know, I like that my wife is reading Sarah J. Mass because then I don't have to, and she can tell me all about it. Uh, no, Logan Allen will probably never read The Grace of Kings because more than three people made reviews for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like the thing is. Like, when when it happened, I watched it happen in my Discord. Like it was like a chain of dominoes falling. And I audibly I said to my like mods, I went, I was like, no, I really <laughs> wanted to read Grace of Kings. I just read it, dude. I can't, I can't now. I can't. <sighs> it's too long. It's too it's too long. That's really why. I mean, it's a child of God was ridiculous. I don't think I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was just like one of those books where you read and you go. I, I love it when you can't even figure out like if you liked it or not. And Seth said, I specifically told you not to read Child of God, Jimmy. I know. I remember you saying that. And then I read it. Now. All right. Good luck. All right. <laughs> uh, called Chasm City. It's my favorite in that universe. Highly recommend. Cool. Oh, you DNF the road. Why? If you were struggling with Cormac's um, writing style, which is fair. Um, I would suggest doing it on audio. The audio books uh, for all of McCarthy stuff is just absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, Child of God is is rough. I do think it's beautifully written, though. 
Um, oh, oh, look at that. I said that shut down said he says his prose is rather plain compared to his other works and it's mostly meandering. The ending is brilliant, though. No, I see. I didn't have a problem with the writing. I thought it was fun. What, I really want to read some Joe Hill. Yeah, I think The Road is one of the best books I've ever read, without a doubt. We got a kitty cat? Yeah. Let's see it. No. Get him. Look in the camera. I got a I got a bigger house coming. I think I might get another cat. I might have to get me one of them. Oh, get one of them British short hairs. British short hairs, man. Fine. I woke him up. He was he was in there laying on the bed with with the dog and uh Christina. And I'm like, come on, you're coming out in the living room. Do, do your cats love laying on books? Like if you have a book open, do they just like Yes, it elevates them like half an inch off the ground? Yeah. <laughs> what what is that? I don't freaking know. <laughs> I don't know. Hearing a grown man say he has to go potty is something I never knew I needed in my life until now. Oh, that's that's true. That's true. Yeah, I had to go to potty. Uh, well, that's what I mean. That's what we say to the dog. So, Danelle know. says, "When is Alan going to put some chest on his hair? Delve, <laughs> Delve into Berserk." Man, don't Berserk do it. Seems like it's. I'm not sure if I'd like Berserk. There's a I chance I would. I don't know if you would, man. Like I watch like. Was it Hirasha Guri? Higurashi? Whatever when they cry is. And that's pretty that's a that's a disturbing show. Um, yeah, it's rough. But uh but yeah, I've heard Berserk is I've heard Berserk isn't even gonna be finished though. Like didn't like he died, right? Yeah, he, he died. Um I, I, I think as of right now it's not gonna be finished, but I, I don't know like maybe his assistants will finish. I, I'm honestly not too sure because I haven't I purposely have avoided anything about the ending of it because I still don't want to get spoiled, you oh. know. So uh, once I get there, I'll, I'll try to probably look around a little bit more. But what I will say is it's just fantastic. What's up, Ryan? It's this clutch book discussions on a Friday night. Let's go. Look at that he's cat tired. sleeping in my eyes. He he's adorable. He is very cute. He's also a monster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, fantasy fanatic. <laughs> Alan is trying to stay caught up by yelling across the room. I am. I hate being behind. It's my life. It's my life behind. Yeah. For how much you love Long Price Quartet, like imagine if someone had reviewed that prior to you, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, but again, like I like Mistborn and, you know, Brandon Sanders is the most popular thing on the Internet. Yeah. So why did you read Mistborn if you don't like popular stuff? I'm, I'm um, Buddy Reed. Buddy Reed for something. It was me and... Charmaine and Katrina read it. Buddy reads are the way to do it. And this was, be this was before the, the great buddy read burnout of 2021 that everybody experienced. Um, <laughs> so, you know, and so that's why I read the first one in November and then didn't read the second one until I read the first one in, yeah, in a November and then didn't read the second one till April and then read the third one, in October. I knew there were gaps. I knew there were gaps. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying Joanna said she would buddy read Grace of Kings with you. So I'm just that's saying. fantastic. I'm just saying. So I'm happy to read it. The second that I have an open slot <laughs> in 2025. I mean, the, I just I have there's there's there are things that I have to get through currently. I know. Like I have to finish. I don't need you to read it now. I just oh, don't want no, you to. I, I will definitely read it. I, okay. I'll definitely I, I will definitely read it because it's silk punk. And again, it's politics and war and they got metal know, detectors and yeah. And uh, you know, like it, everyone has told me that I will like it and I believe, I do believe them. So I definitely will read it. I'm, I'm giving people a hard time about like, I'll, I'll finish Greenbone eventually. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah. I liked Jade. Like I liked Jade city enough to continue. Um, I, I just, I just, how do you handle though? Cause like you split up your trilogies and stuff. Like how do you handle coming back to something? Cause like, oh, I struggle. The great thing with that is audiobooks have really helped me with that. So you reread? Yes. Uh, every one of my rereads. So I did Dragon's Path um, back here in April on audio. And it was real, not back in April, but back in January on audio. And it was really, really helpful um, because I'd read it before. And so, you know, Fine world building stuff. It didn't matter. I knew I knew how the world was built. Um, so I just it, it, it was really really good. I liked it on audio a lot. Yeah. And so I've done that with. I'm actually about to do that with Blackwing to refresh because I read Blackwing last August and I'm supposed to be continuing that series. Um, I did it with Tagana. I read. That's how I got back into Tagana. I reread 
like the first 300 pages. Cause every time I sat down to reread those first 300 pages, I'm like, I can't do this. And so I just, I read it. Simon Vance, first of all, who is amazing. Yeah. Um, and so I, I read up to where I'd left off on audio. And so that is what I'm, that is what I have decided that I am doing for catching up on series like that is uh, I like that rereading now for Mistborn, I didn't need, I didn't do anything like that, but I remembered enough, you know? It yeah. I mean, okay. I forgot what metal does. What guess what? Old Brando is going to let me know. He's, He's got the uh, strategy guide in the back. He's going to let fine. me know. <laughs> Uh, Jamie said, Jimmy, did you ever read the paper of Menage Ray? Uh, no, I have not yet, but I own it and I will. I didn't want to, um, read. I'm more likely to read that than grace of Kings sooner because I can read a story because it's a short read story collection. You. I'd read that with you. Really? You, cause I'll read a story it? and then put it down. I got no problem doing that. I mean, I read Ted Chiang's short story collection. I thought it was, I made a video about it and it, I knew Which it was, one was his, pop. what was that? Uh, one? Stories of your life and others. Uh, what? the movie arrival is based off one of the stories in it. Um, what? Like I knew that video was just going to perform terribly. And I was like, I'm making this video. This is so good. And uh, both were correct. It was so good. And the video did bomb. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, you know, like ranking not, short story collections. Not you're not, not out there chasing them. Them video. You want you want something to bomb. Uh, don't post anything for forever. And <laughs> just watch as um, as the as your your rival that you defeated in the ring, brutally defeated in the ring. Just like zooms past you in subs because you put up like two videos in the last two months. <laughs> like I, I know that's a really like oddly specific uh, example, <laughs> but yeah, maybe it can apply to your life. How dare you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've actually watched uh, the first couple episodes of Lock and Key on Netflix, and I thought it was really good. Um, I know you're suggesting I read it, but like, is the show worth watching or no? Someone let me know, and I know I'm like way far behind, but. <laughs> I mean, Jimmy, can I pull you aside from? Oh my goodness, Berserk is the best story I'll never read. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. It is. I do think it's phenomenal, like legitimately amazing. So, uh, neither is a song. That it's still a masterpiece. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. To talking about it not being, you know, um, finished. They were talking about Berserk not being finished and how things can still be pretty uh, amazing. You Word. know what else I've been thinking about since I'm, uh, you know, I started name of the wind and everyone had to remind me that I'll never be finished. Cause I didn't know, already know that. Um, you can't, you can't, you can't talk about this one. Like if you, if you mention that this one isn't going to be finished, Rothfuss gets in his car, drives outside your house and starts to throw rocks through your window. Like with like a note tied around it. That's <laughs> it's just, it's just a bunch of Qbert, uh, special characters on the top row of uh, him swearing at you so you can't <laughs> in the third book or he he'll drive your house and throw rocks that's true story well if people like i've had so many people like do not read book two don't make the same mistake i did it will never be finished and i'm just like it's not that big of a deal yeah i if i would just say don't read book two because it's you're gonna be like oh but book one was so good <laughs> you think book that two man is a okay there's a hundred pages in book two that pretty much every single person who's ever read it is like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Like, why is this here? Like, what is this? Per what is the purpose? Of I think book? I know what it is because everyone's talked about it so often. And it's not that it happens. It's the fact that there's a hundred, like it's, it doesn't even have for a hundred pages. Um, but also like, it just, a lot goes on. There's a lot more that happens. And I'm not sure I like that. I think I liked the more static stuff. I don't know. I think I just, I think I just really like the university setting. Of the first one. Oh, I always forget that stupid ending. I, I hate that ending. I hate it. Jimmy, I'm sending you the private chats. So you know what I'm talking about? Cause I don't want to spoil anything. Wait, you're talking about name of the wind, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I went to the wise man fear. Okay, cool. Um, so people are saying such tree is really, really good. Um, I'm, I'm excited to try that. Hey, Garrick, thank you. He said, I love the Ted Chang video. It convinced me to buy and I can't wait to read it. Thank you. You thank see that you. part of the private chat? That's what I think is dumb. Oh, it's interesting. I actually like that part. Jimmy! I thought that part was cool. I thought the whole part with... Hold on. I thought it was fine. I thought it was fine. <laughs> it's it's so like a section. You didn't, you didn't like that whole section? No, the whole section. I just thought the end... I, I, hate, I hated the end the most. I just didn't like the whole section. Yeah, so should I bring you on for a name of the wind spoiler chat? 
I mean, I'll, I mean, I'll just talk about how much I hate that end section and you'll have a whole bunch of people in the comments, uh, like telling me how much, like, Alan, we thought we liked you and, and chatting with nuts. And here you are talking bad about Denna. People do not like it when you talk bad about Denna, but Denna sucks. She sucks. I don't <laughs> like her. She's so bad. Oh, look, well, the perfect thing. We're talking about this unfinished book, right? And Denna sucking. Well, there's another unfinished book. Uh, series and it's called the gentleman bastards and i think that that is probably going to get bumped up lies of lock lamora you know you said sun eater took over your wheel there was a time where people like got together and like we're all going to do lies of lock lamora and it didn't win and people were like what in the world jimmy's rigging this thing like it was that's like 18 that's what mine have said that's what mine have said like seriously there's a hundred things on my wheel like 11 of them are freaking sun eater and they're just like there's like alan this is crap this is crap like I can... oh, AJ Parker book one. Oh yeah, that's not rigged. I'm like, look, I didn't put that on there. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you, I uh, I promise everyone that I would never rig my picks because I'm no, too lazy. Because <laughs> I I hate reshooting stuff. <laughs> like I refuse. <laughs> nice. <laughs> never. Oh man, there are so. Oh, that's many me with first law. Like I delay it five years every time someone complains that I haven't read first law. I'm like, eh, okay, so maybe 2027. <laughs> That Ted Chang video was fire, by the way, Jimmy. Screw the algorithm. Eh, it's all good. You know, I'm, I'm just, I just make the videos that I want to talk about. Like, there's books I read, like Project Hail Mary. I really, really like that book. Like, I gave, I, I think it's great, like, phenomenal. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to review it because I don't really have much to say other than it was dope. It's also a book that you can't really talk about because surprises and stuff. So, Jimmy, yes, I have reviews to film. <laughs> I have reviews to film from May. And I'm I, still, and I don't mean from this month. I mean from last May. I'll one up you. That's how behind I am. I I wrote a book two years ago that I took extensive notes for, and I still want to review it, and I've never posted it because I just keep forgetting. Oh, Fever God. Dream by George R. R. Martin. Oh, Jimmy, I love it, Jimmy. My, what's wrong, Jimmy? I have so many books I haven't reviewed, but every time I think about sitting down to film a review, it's hard enough. I can't make myself sit down to film with TBR, but a review, I'm like, but I don't want to do this it's too hard and it takes too long to edit i it's too hard mr you know, walker it's too hard <laughs> i i have found that while i come across a little bit hyperbolic when i review very quickly after a book um one i do less cuts because i just bleh, and uh two i find it to be more enjoyable if i sit on a book for more than like two or three weeks it's really hard for me to go back jimmy really, the really easiest hard. The thing is, when I filmed the company review, I filmed it the day after I the day after I read it. And you felt um, good, right? It, well, it's because I knew I, there was too much I had to say, and I knew I was going to forget. Um, like I have to do that, and I just don't make myself do it because I'm tired and I don't want to, and I need to. I just need to just just film the review, Alan. Just freaking do it. But it's but but it's I'll start sending you messages. There. I'll start sending you messages to, to, to do it. Just do it. Oh. Just do it. Uh, are you going to read One Piece? I assume this is to me. Um, yeah, probably at one point I will try it. I, I will try it. Um, but there's I a lot of other. There's a lot of other mangas I really like. Monster, uh, Vagabound. Um, I'm reading Attack on Titan with Berserk Monster right now. Like Vinland it. Saga. 20th I Century Boys is also excellent. But I've heard it's great. Monster. It's excellent. Yeah, we might have to do this. Now. And I don't read manga. Like, I, I just don't. Like, I want, if there is an anime, I watch it. 20 Century Boys don't got an anime, so I got to read manga. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard it's really good. Uh, Sarah, I think Sarah even told me, like, specifically, she thinks I would like it. Like, she was like, I, I think, think so too. I think you'd yeah. like anything by him, whether it's Monster or 20th Century Boys. Cool. Uh, Jimmy, after McCarthy, you should start reading more literary fiction. Would love to see you talk about Toni Morrison or, yeah, William H. Goss. Yeah. Um, you know, I like sprinkling those things in from time to time. The one thing I will say, though, is like I usually fill that with Stephen King, and I have so much Stephen King I want to read. So I've I'm read, I've read a lot of Stephen King. Like back before I, so I had a this period where I stopped reading fantasy a lot because all the fantasy I'd read was, it was all, it was all like uh, D D, like all Forgotten Realms fantasy. And yep. then the other stuff, again, this was before like, this was before like the fantasy boom, which is what we have right now. Boom, and so like all it. there was, was like Raymond DeFeist. So I tried to read Magician's Apprentice twice and didn't like it. Yeah, you did not like it. Um, Assassin's Apprentice, which always turned me off because that's ugly purple cover with the dude standing on the cliff. I'm like, Paul Rudd. 
I was like, why do I want to buy this? Bro, it's um, Paul Rudd. Is that who that is? It looks like Paul Rudd. With his long hair? <laughs> yeah. And, um, and so it was like stuff like that. And I, Oh, and uh, Ellie Modisett, Robert Jordan. And I'd read, I already read Eye of the World and hated it. Um, and so I'm just like, well, okay. And so I started reading a bunch of Stephen King, which I'd like for, since high school because I'd been reading Dark Tower ever since – I remember in, in high school waiting for Wizard and Glass to come out. Um, and so I, I just read a bunch of King, like, in my earlier years. I haven't read Stephen King in, like, there is so, like, I say Jesus Crow almost every day. It and changed I the way Jesus I talk. Crow because of Stephen King books. We, we bonded over that because I didn't know that yeah. you had read it. Yeah, I forgot. Um, yeah, yeah, I forgot yeah and we bonded over that. Pretty, yeah, Jimmy, pretty we're big. definitely going to forget crap we've talked about we, we talk way too much no not that one not that one that's oh, this, a newer one one of the this, older ones this is paul rudd right like that is paul rudd that is young paul rudd like bro that's paul rudd <laughs> get um hold on <laughs> and then you have uh george over here with the most generic endorsement of all time fantasy as it ought to be written um which he doesn't sound like that but hold on listen guys plus one in the chat if that's paul rudd right here jimmy right plus here one in the chat these are the covers I'm talking about. All right, let me see. Let me see what you what you sent me. Oh, you don't like these? I mean, when I was when I was in college, I like them now. When okay. I was in when I was in college, no. Okay, I was gonna say these ones are fantastic. I mean, I I agree. I'm looking at them now, being like, what was wrong with me? But I was just like, I don't want to. I don't. I don't know what that's about. It just looked. Oh, look at Assassin's Apprentice. Royal Assassin's really cool. Yeah. But Assassin's Apprentice. I was like. Because I remember, I'd just been burned on Eye of the World and Magician's Apprentice. And I'm just like, that just looks like Magician's Apprentice. They do look rather generic. Um, Royal Assassin I, looks cool. I, you know what's funny, though? A lot of people hate the Royal Assassin cover, like specifically that one. And I think it's one of my favorites because these no. are Waylon, right? Waylon did these. Mm -hmm. Now, we, you and I, I that, may be what a, that may be what started our feud at, in Florida is the fact that I'm like, Waylon's okay. But the, I mean, the problem is, Jimmy, Waylon did every single piece of fantasy art in the late 90s, early 2000s. Every single one. Like, there, I, I, there, was, no, there was no fantasy picture that wasn't done by Waylon. And I'm like, it's fine. Like, he's the goat, though. What I mean, but uh, all right, I think yeah, Waylon is an extraordinarily, like, he is an okay. extraordinarily talented artist. His style is not my favorite. But I, I mean, do you want that picture. or do you want these awful, awful big text? Wheel of time cut, you know what I mean? Like if it's this or that, one, no, I hate those two. Then you I gotta hate, take this. You're right. No, I over over that, yes, I'll take this. Um, over the the Assassin's Apprentice one you just showed me, I'll take this. Um, but there are some kinds of covers <laughs> Ant Man's Apprentice. <laughs> that there are some that I like better though. I don't know. I'd have to I'd have to oh, oh, um, for example, the Elantris cover. This is a by a guy named uh, Stephen. Um, what's his name? Stephen. The the cover artist for Elantris also does the LPQ cover arts and also um, a, a self published series as well. Uh, what's his name? But I really I really love his uh, kind of like abstracted style. It's um, not Felix Ortiz, right? No, no, no. I'll, I'll send you. I'll show you a picture right now. Hold on. Um, Oh, Con Connor, this is great. He said, do you guys have any opinions on creators talking about things like algorithm performance or how much money they are? Making? I have a lot of opinions on that. Uh, I, I actually really try never to mention those things um, because I don't think that my viewers want they come to hear me talk about books. Now, this is different, right? When we're in free form conversation, it can come up and that's fine. But um, yeah, I, me personally, it's just how I do things. I, I don't bring it up. Because um, I know whenever my favorite YouTubers that are not booktubers, these are other they have, since I've been watching forever, when they bring up something like that, I immediately go, oh, no, this channel's going to start sucking soon. There we go. I found it. Um, I sent you a, a, a picture of like that kind of style. His name's Steven Martin Martinier. I really oh, like. OK. Um, I really like the uh, his his style of 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 drawing. I really wish that uh, stupid StreamYard had a little bit of a better system here um, because I, I have I to know. kill the screen to... There we go. Yeah, I like this. I like this quite a bit. It just looks, it's incredibly detailed, but without being, like, hyper-realistic. Um, I just don't do... Like, I don't do super well with, like, hyper-realistic art. If yeah. That makes sense. 
Um, Cause then I get this weird uncanny Valley feeling. So I'd rather it be just okay. like a little off. Um, but I am, I am definitely not detracting from Michael Whalen's talent. He is absolutely like the fact that they booted Whalen off of that one series. What, what series was that, that he did like the first two and then they booted him off the third one. <sighs> not only did he do the first two, he did the original trilogy and that's for Tad Williams. Oh yeah. I, I knew it was you that got like super bent out of shape about it. I was mad. I even tweeted. I angrily tweeted. And you don't um, ever angrily tweet. I don't ever tweet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, someone said, when you start a YouTube channel and put out your first video, do you just post it to the void and hope it for the best, or do you need to put hashtags and other SEO to get seen at all? So, yeah, there are some hashtags and stuff. Honestly, I don't think they help very much. The one thing I will say is I hashtag mine booktube without really knowing what it meant. And uh, that's how I met Chris Bookish Cauldron, who then introduced me to a lot of people. And uh, I have a lot of love for uh, Chris Bookish Cauldron because he was, you know, very kind, uh, very kind and welcoming. And he found me through, the, he actually always, he says like every week he goes on and clicks booktube and finds new booktubers to talk to. So. Okay. Cool. Look, I, um, I don't, I forget to hashtag my videos now. I'm like, I don't, like, <laughs> I don't think to do it. Um, and can you put up that, that, the previous comment about the, the creators or whatever? I have plenty to say about it. I was just looking. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I would love to, because there um, it is, Connor. I feel pretty strongly about this. Yeah. So, like, I don't even like the term. I don't. So just like I don't like really popular stuff. I don't really like buzzwords. Like, like I get that we are creators. Like that's physically what we're doing. But like people with Asperger's call themselves Aspies. And I'm like, I don't, I'm not gonna call myself that. Like, I don't like that. Like, I don't like that name. I don't like the, I don't like the name creator. I think it implies to me the term creator, just to me. And it doesn't have to be, that is a gorgeous cover. That's Waylon, baby. Okay, well, I really like that. That's what I'm saying, man. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's that's slightly different than like the the ones from the '90s with the standard like you know uh, fantasy hero in the in the foreground. Um, that's really really pretty. I like that a lot. Um, so um, I personally, the word creator to me sounds like I don't know. It it just it has a connotation of like disingenuousness to me. Um, and, and I'm not saying people that, that use that mean that. And I'm not saying when I use that, cause I say creators too, because that's just the lingo. I just don't like it. Like we're just, just making like YouTube videos. And what is another word for make it's create. But the problem is, is like, even the people like the, when the people that you know are con men um, and the people that you know are literally like chasing the algorithm, like, you know, like their next heroin fix are using the word creator. Like, I don't like being lumped in with that. Um, I don't like, I don't, I, I, I talked about this. In, I don't know what video this was. I, I had a video where I was talking about it. I hate the algorithm. I despise it. I just, I hate that it exists. I hate that anyone acknowledges it, it exists. I hate that it has to be there. Uh, when I started YouTube, YouTube did not have this thing that appears under, on your, on your creator homepage under the current video that says congratulations or nice this video oh. is doing better than expected more <laughs> yeah. than more regular viewers than normal are engaging in this material but it also says oh fewer viewers than normal are watching this video it's like i know like i just posted like jimmy i just posted a freaking short story anthology review i didn't expect it to do well I get it, YouTube. You don't have to let me know in a way that I can't avoid seeing. It's like YouTube, like rude. It's just rude. So the out, like I have the only time I've ever clicked on the algorithm page, the analytics page, is when uh, Bookborn and I were talking about, or Leanne and I, or Elle and I, someone and I were talking about uh, male female ratio like the the amount of your viewers that are male or female like mm -hmm. trying to just get the ratios and some of them were really interesting um i have like i'm like i think like 56 female 46 male percent or whatever yeah um again that was last time i checked which was last year but I, like i hate it like i don't understand the the analytics tab but i do know i do know me as a person and i don't want to be the person that chases that like i does it bother me when, when, you know, something I work really hard doesn't get a lot of views? I mean, sure, but that's everyone. Like, I get it. But I can't, I cannot become the person who is like, ooh, this, con 
I mentioned this in this video and everyone loved that. Why don't I make a whole bunch more videos about this exact same thing so that I can get all of the subscribers? Ooh, because I mean, you only have to compromise one time before it's easier to compromise like repeatedly. And it's not that, it's not that I don't wanna do popular stuff, I, I do. I'm just not gonna, I just don't prioritize. Like, why don't I do Stormlight content? You know, Jimmy, you passed me in subs. I can fix that tomorrow. Tomorrow by posting Sanderson content. I can fix it. <laughs> Sanderson is my most popular video. <laughs> I know. Um, the thing is, people have been waiting on a freaking um, Hero of Ages review for me since I read it in October. So I'm seven <laughs> months behind posting that review. <laughs> But the problem is, like, I'm not willing to prioritize that over the crap that I really want to do. Like, I do, I am going to do that stuff. I'm just not going to get there. And I understand, I understand that some people have, have a different view, and that's fine. Yeah. My problem is when people, you watch big YouTubers or even, like, like larger booktubers. Right. Pretend like they're one video away from poverty. Like if one video doesn't do, doesn't get a hundred thousand views. Oh no, you're homeless. You're going to lose your job. Who heavens for fan. You're going to have to go back working in an office. It's just not true. It's not true. Everyone can see how many patrons you have. And if, if it was just $1 a month, you make more than I do as a teacher for just $1 a month. You. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, some videos don't do well. And, and it's always couched. Like, I don't like that. I don't like when people who are doing this as their job talk about that. They're like, you know, I really want to talk about this and this and this, but I can't afford, but the algorithm will hate it. And then, you know, I can't do that. So I'm not going to talk about that. I'm like, then what are you doing? Why did you start this? I think it costs you some like artistic integrity. And I speak as like the martyr standing on the street as the, you know, the starving artist or heavens for Fen, the public school teacher. But it's like, did you start it to do that? Or did you start it to talk about what you want to talk about? Like there, question. there is a threshold. There is a critical mass. There is a critical mass that as long as you are not greedy, because unchecked greed is the problem in general, with everything. If you are not greedy, there is a critical mass that you achieve that it does not matter what you do. No one's unsubscribing. You're going to be able to make a living forever as long as you don't drag a person on the screen and shoot them in cold blood. Like, I mean, that, that would get a lot of views, to be I fair. I mean, that's true, but many people would be horrified. You can freaking talk about whatever you want. And even if it gets 20K views instead of 80K views, your channel is going to be fine. You're going to be fine because most of your money doesn't come from the ad revenue. It comes from Patreon. Like that's mm -hmm. – so I don't like this attitude of like playing the algorithm game. Like what's the freaking point of that? Like – Talk about something you like. It's the same principle in school where I got kids who won't take my Latin class next year because it's only 4.5 weighted, even though they love me, they love my class, but it's not 5.0. So they're going to take AP bio, which they despise for their GPA. Yeah. That's, it's the exact same thing. Yes, Christian, exactly. Exactly. Like, yeah, it, it, it just, it, like, it sucks the joy. And, it, and I assume it makes you, it burns you out. It's what it does to my kids. That's what it does to my students. Yeah. It just, like, it sucks all the joy out of learning for them because they're playing this freaking game. And, you know, some people, like, people can call me stupid. And that's fine. Like, you know, that, like, you'd be foolish not to play in the system that exists. I am a born revolutionary and I'm stubborn. So I guess I'm just gonna, I'll be the one that stands there and, rails against the machine with my sandwich board and my bell you know while everybody walks by I got a big old beer with like spiders in it so <laughs> i just like it i am not trying to say that if you if you care about how your channel is doing that there's something wrong with you there's not like no. there there isn't i there's i would none. never disparage anybody who is trying <clears throat> to get their channel off the ground or whatever it bothers me when really big youtubers like when all they talk about is money and i'm like like i don't 
I don't want to watch you if that's all you care about. I want you to, because, because even if it's not true, I don't know how you can trust someone's opinion when they tell you how much they care about money and views. Even if, even if they are still giving their 100% honest opinion, how do you trust it? How? Good question. They've literally told you they care about money and views. Even if they're giving their real opinion, it taints it because how do I know that you're not changing your opinion for money and views? You literally just told me. Hmm. So it's... a. And, and when there's people with like 2 million subscribers saying that crap, I'm like, you just don't want to have to give up your eighth home. Like, you are fine. <laughs> Save your money better, millionaire. Yeah, you know, um, Sorry, one of I, the... I don't mean to start yelling, Jimmy. No, it's fine. Uh, so uh, what I will say is this. I, I will say things like, oh, video bomb. That is never to um, make people feel like, oh, they should feel bad for not. No, no, no. Like I oh, knew yeah, a, totally okay. yeah, I knew a select amount of people would watch that video and I was okay with that. I accept that. I don't care. I don't care to be honest. Like if I, and I got some amazing comments on that video and uh, I just really enjoyed talking about that, that short story collection mm -hmm. folks. If you ever hear me coming on this wonderful show and talking to you wonderful people and I start saying things like, uh, you know, asking you why you're not watching my videos or complaining about a click-through rate or any of that, that means it's over. It's over. Because when it becomes about that for me, that's when I'm done. I do this because I, and you know, I, and again, anyone who does care about these things, that is totally valid. I, uh, you know, good on them. It doesn't matter. But for me personally, when I started this thing and what it will always continue to be is a, as an outlet in a community, I am not a very social person. I don't have a lot of friends. Um, like literally, this community is my social life and my friends. Um, and I'm proud of that. And I, and I'm, and I'm happy with that and it provides me an outlet and that's what this will always be. It'll be when I run out of things to talk about will be the end of it all. Um, and I don't think I would ever get to the situation where I would be complaining about any kind of monetary issue with my channel. Uh, like I, that comes so last to me. Um, yeah. And, and there's nothing wrong with talking about like a, like a video, like bomb. I make a joke out of it. I think it's funny. Yeah. Yeah, every time I'm, here, I'm like, I'm like, I, I know when it's going to. I I jump in front of him, like, ain't nobody gonna watch this video. And you know what? I don't care. I don't care. Like, yeah. I am determined. I am gonna start my my history series videos this summer. And like, the people here may be like, I'm gonna watch your history video. It's like, okay, like, so so 150, you're gonna watch it. Thanks, I appreciate that. That's awesome. Yeah. Like, ain't nobody gonna watch no freaking me talking about no history videos. You want to know why? There ain't no fun animations. I don't know how to do that. I'm not gonna have any. Yeah, I'm not gonna have any like fancy things. Bro, you gotta watch my name of the wind review. I did all a bunch of fancy stuff. I, oh. I talked I talked to Christian. He set me up. He's like, dude, it's easy, mate. He's dude, like, I don't know how to do any of that. It's gonna be me talking with a map popped up every now and then. <laughs> I need to show you a map. Um, but you know, and I don't care if anybody watches them. Like, I first of all, this is how I teach myself. Like, I by teaching that class that I have, I know so much more. I can read these history books, it doesn't stick. Not until I teach it, mm -hmm. and that, that's what helps it stick. And so, that's what that's what I love. I'm gonna do it. And you know what? If 150 people watch it, I don't care. I'm still gonna do it because it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. Well, tell you what. Like, so my berserk videos. Uh, my first one is probably the second most popular video I ever did, and um, which is not why I did it. I did it because everyone told me to read berserk, and I was in a grim, dark mood. I said, "Let's do this thing, right?" So I start reading this, and um, my first video does really well. So then I switched it to a different format. I switched it to me and my buddy Andrew, my best friend of all time, just talking about this. I said, "Hey, dude, you should read this," and like the views significantly decreased. Like, oh, they're actually my least most they're my least popular videos on my channel easily, and I love them. I love it. That's Every awesome. two weeks we do an issue of Berserk and it's like, I literally just talked to my best friend and we just like, did you see Guts sword? Yeah, it's crazy, dude. And like, we have, we have a small viewership, but like the viewership is so good. Oh. They're so passionate yeah. and like, and, and like they're encouraging us to, to, to theorize and stuff. So even those, those videos like monetarily or whatever, statistically, yeah. they do very poor. I love them. They're like yeah. my favorite thing. That's awesome. Oh, like I'm doing something, I'm doing a, a pet project this weekend. This weekend I'm having a like a teen Jeopardy with like three of my students coming yeah, out yeah, and well, answering questions about like crap I teach in class. I got some ways to tie it into the book community though. 
Um, but like, ain't nobody gonna watch that. No one's gonna, no one knows the answers to the questions I'm going to ask, except maybe my, my patron Albert. Cause he's like a ancient history, like major ancient um, aliens, but no, 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 <laughs> but, um, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Cause that's, it's fun. And it's a way to get my, my kids involved who I love. Um, and you know, first of all, um, hyperspace <laughs> insists that I'm a Sith Lord. <laughs> yeah. Second of all. Uh, a fantasy fanatic prefers me ranting out of frame. So next time I start ranting, I got to go in the kitchen. You got to walk away. I got to go in the kitchen and start, start hollering. But yeah, I mean, I'm going to do it. And, you know, like, I don't care if anybody watches it. The kids are going to, they're going to have a blast. Like, they're going to be tickled pink that they're on Walker's channel. I already got them some merch with my logo on it. No. And one, yeah. And one of the kids, like, the day after I gave it to him, wore it to school. Freaking Walker. Library of Alexandria merch, and I was like, "Dang, you actually wore it!" I just thought you were, like, I just thought you wanted one. They're like, "No, I'm wearing it, Walker." I'm like, "Yes, that's Walker. awesome, dude." Benjamin, thank you for the 15 spot. He said, I appreciate you both. The community engagement is unrivaled. It brings so much to so many of us. Cheers and thank you, Benjamin. Thank you. Benjamin's uh, been a supporter on Patreon for a long time and been around for a bit. Uh, he just read Warlord Chronicles and loved it. Benjamin did. Yep, my friend yes. from down under. Yes. Oh, Devil, you're such a moron, Devil. Oh, Devil, you oh, an idiot, Devil. <laughs> I love Merlin. Freaking yes. love Merlin. Monica, thank you for the 10, uh, 10 spot on the super sticker. Um, it doesn't show up on StreamYard, but if everyone looks in chat, it's like this little, like, I don't even know what this thing is. It has like a leaf on its head or is that hair? And it says, thank you. <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> thank you, Monica. It's very kind of you. It is. It's, <laughs> it's so wild. Is it a, is it a teepee? I think it's. It I, I don't know. I wish Streamyard. Like, come on, Streamyard. How do you not have this? Get it stream? together, Streamyard. I pay you a lot of money. Seriously. Cool. Yeah. So, so, what time is Student Jeopardy? One. It's at one because okay. one of them. Because you know, uh, one of the kids has to go work at Olive Garden at four, so I had to move it back. Of course, the vegan tells us that it's a pair. Thanks, a pair. Amanda. Is it? <laughs> She's vegan. Bro. Oh, yeah. it must cut off. I don't see it's round. Oh. Oh, apparently it's not. It's not just right. everyone's like it's it's a pair, dummies. <laughs> you click on it; it's obvious it's a pair. If you look at it in the icon, it doesn't look anything like a pair. Thank you so much, Tiago. I'm so glad you watched it. Tiago Abdallah. Tiago Abdallah, who has uh, his novella in his uh, in his series. If you have not read Touch of Light, it is so good. Touch of Light is excellent. I, I own it. Self published debut, and he just released. He's releasing a novella um, on. June 1 or May 31? This month. This month or rare beginning next month, a novella in the same world is coming out. I have not yet read the novella. Um, I don't, that's because it, it's not out, obviously. <laughs> but uh, I will read it. Um, I like this. Danelle said, Alan brings up great points. I think usually there's a happy medium between the two popularity algorithm versus something like uh, creators want to cover and don't do as well. I lean towards Alan though. Yeah, uh, it, it is one thing. I will say this. Like if literally nobody in my community wanted to see me review, like, I don't know, pick a pick something that's, you know I mean, that's, that's probably that's, true. That's, that's like different right like that's a little different but people generally like to just hear takes they, they like to hear opinions uh, they want to hear about also interest. jimmy like we have really good communities they watch it because we're talking about it yeah and for sure so like it you, i don't know how you would you know unless you're going like this is why i don't know this is why <sighs> this is why i'm hot this yeah, is, or I'm this hot. is why genocide is a good thing. You know, no one's gonna watch that. There's I, a sound bite. I, I, please, no, no, no. no <laughs> yes, no, 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 no. that's oh, the next no. gift. Oh no, Evie, where are you? <laughs> Do Hopefully, she don't believe he left. Oh no, that's so. Oh my gosh, that's so out of context. But never mind. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on. I don't, know, I, don't, I don't even know where to go from there. No! <laughs> oh, touch oh. of light. Touch of light has a phenomenal cover. Um, it is so good. If, if take that out of context right now, no, uh, folks. Also, uh, I showed everyone. Um, <laughs> this is so funny. Um, uh, we showed you the Empire of Grass cover. Now I want you to see the new. And and I'm not trying to trash the artist that did this. I'm still work. really behind on comments. Sorry, right. it's all good. But this is the new cover. Um, let me see. I think it's nine, seven, eight. I got to figure out what, what tab it is. This is the new Tad Williams cover. 
compared well, to Empire. It's yeah, and I, and I get, I I understand that you're not trying to trash an artist's work. I do understand that. Um, but. But I think it's like you were allowed to say it. I don't like it as much as the other one. I, it's this, so much worse. This doesn't tell me anything. And it's fine if the series began like this. Well, three. It, it looks like um, that cover, the color scheme and, and the lettering, everything it reminds me of Court of um, Thorn and Flame, that most recent oh. one. The, yeah. the one that's orange and gray and whatever, which is fine if that's the cover scheme for the whole thing. But when you have that, the, the really pretty, like, verdant nature one, and then they go to this, like, I, I don't I don't understand the choice. So yeah. it, it, it's just a bummer. Um, like, I don't even know if I'm going to get three and four in hardback. I'll probably just do the ebooks. Like, I don't I don't need them. On my, I got gotcha. I, I don't need them on my shelf. Austin. I'm gonna give you a shout out. Thanks, thanks for the thanks for the really nice comment. What what did Austin say? <laughs> Just said that I was a handsome dude. Does he uh, support genocide as well? Yeah. I just long before the genocide comment. <laughs> says says I was gone for a second. Did I miss Alan saying anything egregious? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Unfortunately, um, r- reading Rainbow. I do not like Marcus Aurelius. Um, Oh, I miss. I meant to put that on screen. I do not like Marcus Aurelius. My, my, my students and I actually collectively hate Marcus Aurelius. Uh, in fact, I showed them a poll. I'm in a Facebook group, Roman Roman uh, History Forum or whatever, and they're having like, like a like a bracket of Roman emperors. And Marcus Aurelius, who did he beat recently? Um, he beat. Hold on, he beat somebody. Oh, Aurelian. He beat like didn't just beat Aurelian, destroyed Aurelian. And someone in the comments, which we agree with, is like, oh, okay, so the person who inadvertently caused the third century crisis versus the person who actually ended it, being Aurelian. Like, I don't like, I, I understand why other people like Marcus Aurelius, and he was a good emperor. He's bad at choosing a successor, like his son. He's a bad parent, clearly. Um, I just don't like Marcus Aurelius. I don't like, I don't like, I'm not a stoic. Like, is I'm it not his a stoic. Face? Is it his face? No, it's just the fact that, he, I mean, he's the philosopher emperor, right? Like the reason he's, part of the reason that he's uh, in the cultural zeitgeist is one, gladiator, because um, he's communist his dad. Yeah. Uh, two, he's the stoic. So he has this thing called, the, his book called Meditations that people quote from it a lot. Um, I know I, I know people who quote Marcus Aurelius who are super nice, but Marcus Aurelius has also been co-opted by like really big douchebags um, mm. who, you know, treat everybody like crap. Can you and name a few? Like, what? Can you name a few? Like big douchebags, they're mostly yeah. online. They're mostly online. Okay. Um, they're the it's the it's the strong people create strong times. Uh, strong uh, strong times create yeah. those people. Mm. Um, and uh, so like I went like when we were at at, at our at our uh, trip, I dropped my kids off, my students off at Barnes and Noble, and I parked the car because it was raining. So I let them out like a nice dad, and um, parked the car and walked through the rain. By the time I got in there, they had five stacks. Of Marcus Aurelius philosophy books that they're like, <laughs> for you. And I'm like, how did y'all get those that fast? So <laughs> they're not, good kids, man. I'm not, they're, 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 I love them so much. And the good thing is, is like, they always tune into my freaking streams. So I have to like be really uh, like mean about my praise, but they're not going to like, they're not going to watch it here on your stream. So I'm a, I say, I'm a superstar. What I can say that I, I know, but they don't know that. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I love these kids. Like these, these are absolutely fantastic kids. Um, but yeah, so I haven't talked about the philosophy a lot. I talk a lot about philosophy in my class, Greek philosophy, especially. Um, I like Seneca. Okay. Uh, and I know he's a stoic too, but I don't, I don't like the stoics. I don't like the Epicureans. I, um, who do I like? I guess <laughs> That's a good question. I, don't like any of the philosophers. I like Socrates a lot. Oh, Socrates and Aristotle. I like Aristotle. I hate Plato. With every fiber of my being. Why? Because Plato's a blowhard. First of all, Plato's a wrestler. That's not even his real name. Plato's his wrestling name. Okay. Um, okay. Plato. Plato was a student of Socrates, and Socrates didn't write anything down. So the only thing we have from Soc about everything we know about Socrates is from his students that wrote stuff down, like Xenophon, who I love, love Xenophon. Plato, his early dialogues sound a whole lot like it's it's consistent with other portrayals of Socrates. But as Plato started to realize, oh, I'm, I'm a pretty big deal student of Socrates. You know, I've got my own philosophical ideas. 
he starts using Socrates as a mouthpiece in his writings for his own philosophical ideas. And I hate Plato's, I hate, I hate him. I, I, I hate it. Hate Plato. He's just a blowhard. And every, like all the people that I like in Greek history always fought with Plato. Like Aristotle fought with Plato. Um, Diogenes used to go to Plato's lectures and like chew loudly <laughs> so that it interrupted <laughs> his lectures. That's pretty um, awesome. So I just, I think Plato is a bit of a, I think he's a bit of a schmuck. Um, that is an unpopular opinion among philosophical circles because Plato, and you know, interestingly, interestingly, the reason Plato is so big is because every single one of his works survives. A lot of the competitors of contemporaries of Plato, not a whole lot of their of their uh, philosophical works are extant. They, they've been destroyed. So hmm. it makes you think, Jimmy. Hmm. Anyway, like that's 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 my that's my my Plato take. Um, so Plato sucks. Got it. I mean, to me, most people love Plato. I love Socrates and uh, and Aristotle. Um, yeah, and the person that said there's a happy medium between the analytics and, and doing it, like, I, I completely Certainly. agree. I completely agree. Like, if you're running a channel, like, you obviously care about what it's doing. There's, you're, you're perfectly within your rights to, um, to do it. My problem is when people, when creators start trying to, like, shame their audience into, yes. like, that, like, that's, that's rude. It's, it's not rude. a good look. It's what? It's not a good look. No, it's, it's just rude. I don't know why. I I don't like rude. And I, I, I mean, I think it's obvious because I keep saying things are rude. Um, but yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm back at pair with a sweatband. <laughs> oh. Garrick said, do either of you have plans to read Book of the New Sun, Shadow of the Torture by Gene Wolfe? Yes, a book. I have it. And I even have the companion book that tells me what it's about. Yeah, I uh, I would love to squeeze that in as soon as possible. Um, but I don't know when that will be like, I would love it to be this year, but I can't pretend like it's definitely going to happen. But if possible, uh, it's been one of the top ones on my list ever since I crossed off Malazan. So I'm trying to catch up. Oh, Plato was just gaming the algorithm. He was, he was freaking Plato. Go wrestle somebody. <laughs> Downward Dog said, it'd be awesome if you guys could just stop talking about sweet boots so I don't go broke. <laughs> Our bad. Oh, yeah. And uh, Oso saying, like Marcus Aurelius because of Gladiator. That's fine. You can like Marcus Aurelius for, uh, as Gladiator. And, you know, a lot of people like Marcus Aurelius. He, uh, he did do a, um, I mean, he did a pretty decent job keeping the Empire together. Um, the problem is his son broke it. Hmm. No, Socrates. Gary, do not tell her. Socrates is better than Plato, but Plato is fine. I mean, that's the best I can say about Plato is he's fine. Um, I love Socrates, though. Man, like, if you had a friend like Socrates, you'd have punched him. Like, no wonder he didn't have any friends because uh, he's just so annoying. Yeah, those dang wrestlers. Never no never known a good one. <laughs> oh, this is a good question. Downward Dog said, did you guys ever read a series of unfortunate events? Reading that to my stepdaughter right now, and it's so nostalgic, and the experience has been so cool sharing these with her. I've actually never read these, but I do have a guy at Jiu-Jitsu that trolls me. And every time he sees me, he goes, did you read any Lemony Snickets this week? And I'm like, no, I've never read them. But that's like the only author he knows. It's kind of funny. I have I've not read any of those. Um, I have some student. Oh, I have a student trying to get me to watch uh, the NPH uh, show on Netflix. Hmm. Um, uh, Monica wants to know if she should dump her copy of Meditations. Uh, I mean, like, uh, who, who's this? Who is it that said it? Like, like reading rainbow says a lot of them do make you feel better. A lot of things in there that make you feel better, but they, I mean, they're not really easy to do in practice. Like they're, it's just, it's like, okay, cool. Like that's a cool story, bro. How does that actually make anything better? Um, no. I, so I even have a copy of meditations because <gasps> I mean, I have, a, I have a lot, of ancient, I have a lot of ancient history books. Sell out. And so it's worth reading to know, what kind of person Marcus Aurelius was. It's just not something that I'm going to carry around in my pocket to be like, well, let's see what Aurelius says about this. <laughs> uh, and, and, and they're just better emperors. They're way better emperors, like way better. Marcus Aurelius isn't even, I don't even think he's in my top 10. <laughs> didn't he make a top 10? What? He didn't even make your top 10? No. And, and I'm only counting up to Commodus. I'm not counting anything after Commodus. What a loser. Which I think is the first... That's the first, like, 16 emperors? How do you feel about Spartacus? 
Okay, so Spartacus, so Spartacus, Spartacus wanted to get out. He listened to his friends. Like when they first escaped um, and started their slave rebellion, Spartacus wanted to flee to Gaul because he knew, hey, the Romans are going to come kill us. And his all of his dumb, you know, his friend Crixus and his dumb uh, slaves that joined him were like, no, 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 let's loot crap. And so they looted crap and the Romans sent an army after them. Well, the slaves beat the Roman army, which is like, what? You beat a Roman army? But it's like it's like the E tier. Like it's, it's like, the you know, E tier. It's, like, it's like the E tier Roman army. And so they're like, yeah, we're staying. Let's do it. And so the Romans sent another army and they beat that one, too. But that's like it's still like it's still like, you know, fourth string. And so Spartacus is like, guys, like Rome was known as the human hydra. It had an endless supply of human capital. As long as Rome was standing, there was another army coming. I promise. And Spartacus knew that. He's like, guys, we cannot win forever. We need to leave. And they overruled him. And so they stayed in Italy when they should have run north. And if they'd have run north, they probably would have escaped. Um, I don't think the Romans would have chased them into Gaul. Uh, and so and so they all they all died. Rip. They were uh, there were um uh, 10,000 slaves crucified for 130 miles, one every hundred feet. That's pretty intense. Mm, yeah, yeah, it was. Not a good time. Quadman 1978 says, have you either heard of the Manifest Illusion series by Michael R. Fletcher? I've heard of it, but I've never read it. Um, I just got his. Which, what is that? Is that, what's the first book of that? Is that Beyond Redemption? Here, let's take a look. Because I need to know, what series is This Beyond guy has wrote so much. Like he's just one of those people I think that just has so many books I can never keep them straight. I'm looking it up right now. Uh, yes, that's Beyond Redemption. I have books. No, wait. So, um, Quad Man, I have to read Beyond Redemption next month. It was my patron spin, so I'll be reading that next month. No, I, um, I have the Obsidian Path. I have uh, Blackstone Heart and oh, She Dreams gotcha. in Blood. Those are and the see, two I have. That's why I like the um the the wheel is because i would never yes. have picked up beyond redemption i mean it's not it's not something i wouldn't read but i just have so many things that i would read before it that it it might as well never get picked up but that's the point oh yes. jimmy can jimmy can be plato easily plato i would smash plato plato's a jobber yeah he i'm not putting him over you kidding um i'm almost there i'm almost there i've almost caught up Oh, we're about the same the same way. With all these mentions of great thinkers, all I can hear is Vizzini from the Princess Bride. Ever heard of Aristotle? Ever heard of Aristotle? Plato? <laughs> Socrates? Morons! <laughs> wow, that's a good impersonation, dude. I like it. Wallace Shawn drives me up the wall. <laughs> Uh, Daniel says Medi uh, meditations was never supposed to be a book of philosophy. It's just his journals and stuff. Very repetitive at times, but he was just Thank you. his thoughts. Thank you. Yes, Daniel. Thank you. It's been he it's been like canonized Deified by uh, uh you know whoever canonized it oh i like this question 50 b red said is there a fantasy novella standalone either of you would recommend that has potential to blow you away i don't know i don't want to uh, say it'll blow you away but i thought emperor's soul by brandon sanderson was rather good i've heard that as well like i thought it was, it was just a great book and it won the hugo too uh Purple and, purple and gold, or sorry, purple and black by uh, KJ Parker. You can't even get the name right. It's because I'm the like I'm the sponsor of our JCL chapter, Junior Classical League, and the colors are purple and gold. Oh. So we say purple and gold all the time. I got you. Yeah, so you that. you like that more than ogres, huh? Ogres is um, ogres is like sci fantasy. Oh, okay, I, okay. Um, that's that's why I didn't recommend that one. Um, and yeah, I do like it more than Ogres, but Ogres was exceptional. I know Nick Nick read Ogres and did not like it. It's the only uh, novella he's read by Tchaikovsky. Uh, yeah. He said that earlier when we were talking about it. But I thought um, I thought Ogres was exceptional. And Kyle liked Ogres. And Kyle and I have been uh, Kyle and I argue all the time about books. Um, <laughs> Kyle really liked Ogres as well. Well, it's all Ogre now. It's... <laughs> 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 oh man. A lot of people have given a lot of uh, Mike R. Fletcher a lot of love. That's cool. Uh, Seth wants to know: Do you have a favorite pre-soccer tic? Pre-Socratic, pre-Socratic philosopher. Um, so no, because I don't really, I don't teach them. Um, when I start teaching philosophy, we start at Socrates because I don't, I also don't teach a ton before, kind of the, um, really, right at the end of the tyrants uh, of, of of Athens. So kind of the dawn of democracy. Um, so I do talk about them like. Um, 
Thales, Thales and Miletus. Um, so I like Thales because he, uh, you know, led the revolt against, against Cyrus. Um, so I like that he's like, what? Screw this Persian guy. Let's get him. Um, so I like Thales. Um, that's probably going to be, that's, I'm probably going to say Thales. I don't, I don't have a ton of knowledge about pre-Socratic philosophers because, um, you know, philosophy is not my, is not my specialty. I just know what I have to teach the kids. Um, and then whatever else looks cool. So what about you? Is, is X, X, X Anamander? No, 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 that's, no, that's, that's post. That's Alexander. Um, anyway, I hope that answers your question. I, uh, I, there's one philosopher I enjoy, uh, more modern, uh, two chains. And uh, he says, if it don't make dollars, it don't make no sense. You know what I mean? <laughs> My buddy and I, in when I was in high school, there was someone, there was a song that came out that said, Mo Money, Mo Problems. Like, right? right. Like, that's a song, yeah. right? Yep. That's not true. Mo Money, Less Problems. Mo Money, Mo Problems is a, is a logical fallacy. Mo Money, Less Problems. Mo <laughs> Money, Less Problems. Mo Money, Different Problems. Yes, yes. Many of which can be solved by money. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to disagree. Like you do have problems with like, like you have problems like, you know, people wanting to take advantage of you and pretending to be your friend and trying to scam you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's true. And if you're really wealthy, then people are like, you know, following you around all that kind of stuff. I understand that. You're not worried where you're going to live. You're not worried where your meal is going to come from. Your family is taken care of for the rest of their lives. You can buy all the books you want. You can, you can really buy whatever you want. Like, like as long as you're not like I want a planet, you can buy whatever you want. <laughs> like I'm sorry, your problems, your like mo money less problems. <laughs> and put that on a bumper sticker. Pets miss it. Elder Race by Adrian Shavkowski was awesome. I know Alan rated it highly. I liked Elder Race a lot. I like cool. Elder Race. Um, I I like uh, Daniel says the Builders is a great standalone novella, sort of. It's like 200 pages. It's like Grimdark Redwall. That's interesting. I'm gonna add that to my list because I've never heard of that. Yeah, I'm gonna add it too, actually. And I I'm, like I've really enjoyed novellas. One thing I love about KJ Parker is he has so many novellas. So like when I get a hankering, because sometimes you like a hankering for an author, but you're like, I ain't got time to read this freaking book. But when I got a hankering for Parker, I'm like, I guess I'm reading a novella because I do not have time for a novel, but I'm gonna read this novella. I uh, yeah, honestly. That's one of the reasons why I like uh, Cormac McCarthy so much in between books is because he's so short. You know, he, he keeps it pretty brief. Um, but yeah, the builders, I just added it to my TBR and Goodreads. Oh, cool. Yeah, it looks cool, doesn't it? It does look cool. I like the cover. I mean, Grimdark Redwall just sounds absurd. I like the cover that I see on Goodreads. Yeah, looks cool. Who did that? That looks like my. That looks like the same guy. Who did that cover on? Well, I'm you better find it. out. I'm looking at it. Um... <laughs> Uh, have you ever read anything by Arturo Perez Reverte? If I'll you're interested start. in Spanish history, it's a great place to start. I have That's not. Cool. Uh, Spanish history? I'm sure I just butchered that name. I don't think I, I, I don't, I don't know nearly enough about Spanish history. Uh, post two chains, post, post Roman intersection. Two chains. My favorite philosopher. Solomon had a lot of money and lots of problems. <laughs> True. But you know what he didn't have to do? Worry about where his worry about where his meal was coming from. He didn't have a problem taking care of his family, and uh, <laughs> could buy whatever he wanted to. Alan, he why just... don't you have merch? Okay, we need to have a come. We need we need to have a come down to earth here moment. Okay, you need to have merch because okay. I want to buy it. Okay, okay. Look. Where's the merch? Okay, so first of all, I have I have a new logo for my channel, but I had it for two months before I actually changed. Can you my send channel it to on. me? Can you send it to me? My my logo? Yeah, let me see it. Oh, okay. Yeah, let me show it. Let me find it. So I can um, share. And uh, bloody heck. So, but I had it for two months before I actually changed my channel art. And so I've been trying to, <laughs> I've been meaning to put it, put, it, put it on merch for months. I've had this thing for like five, four months. And I just, I'm just like, I don't, I just never have time. And then like, I want to, I want like merch of like, crap that i say all the time toxic positivity the Let's problem is I gotta, pay, I gotta pay someone to design that stuff because I, I, I paid someone to design this logo because i hold on i'm not having a heart attack on 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 camera and i'm doing the same thing like my chest hurt real quick it's like oh no is this it please no <laughs> alan please do not go down please, no. are you okay 
Yeah, yeah, just angina. <laughs> angina. Um, where's my thing? Hold on, there it is. Channel stuff. I might get it. <laughs> um, toxic positivity. Let's get down to business. I mean, you have so many creative people in your community. Community. Someone can make this up for you. I mean, mo money, fewer problems, mo books. That's a T-shirt. That I'm buying. <laughs> I mean, it is like I just that's the thing. Like, I need five star strumpet on something. I know I got I've got like waiting lists for five star strumpet stuff. I love them strip. Who is two chains? <laughs> two, two chains. Is two chains is a uh, modern day philosopher and poet. Uh, is that a rapper? Is that yeah. what you mean? Yeah, and he also did sell crack for a little bit, but you know that's here nor there. What? <laughs> Jimmy nuts. <laughs> I'm really into hip hop, which is a weird fact about me. Are you really? Um, oh, very much so. Word. Fun fact: I used to DJ back in the day. Really? Yeah, not like spinning records though. Just playing music. Why did you spin records? Because I had to make a second income so I could afford gas to drive to my first job. <laughs> Hilarious. I'd like to have more money and be able to buy a planet. I feel like another planet. That'd be a lot of stress. Ooh, The Willful Princess and the Piebald Prince by Robin Hobb is also supposed to be a fantastic novella that we were talking about. Solomon had too many wives. Debatable. There, I sent you I sent you the logo on Twitter. Okay, cool. Because I had that. Oh, hold on. I got a friggin' I got a Plato. I'm sure Plato sold crack. Oh, this is sick, dude. I know. Like I went on Fiverr, I think that's what it's called. And she did um she did such a good job. I was so like I was just very pleased with it. So I really, right. I really like it. And that's what, that's what, that's what's on my, um, the student shirts. Um, cause Michael Mindelin, uh, Michael, Michael's wonderful wife, um, Robin made a patch out of it and sewed it on like the, 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 the here of, um, of some polos. And so it's super, super nice. And she made me these, which I haven't sent out because again, I have like, I'm just, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't have an excuse. I'm just, I'm just pathetic. Um, but like she made these patches. Look at this. Like this is book Jeopardy tournament of champions. Winner. That's so sick. I got to send that out. Mendelin's a great guy. He's so, I love Michael. He is so nice. Yeah. What a great guy. So I got, look at it. I got these patches. Look at that. There it is. Boom. Um, and what so, happened? yeah, so it's, just, I mean, like I want to like, ow, my freaking knee. Your knee, your chest, your head, it's a wrap. No, I hit my knee on my freaking desk. It's over. <laughs> Oso says, I'm a professional artist, Alan. Just saying. Oh, really? Yes. Dude, we have a ton of creative, wonderful people okay, in the community. Well, maybe I need to put out the... And Fit to be Red has it right. He said, your logo on a bookmark would work. Selling 20, uh, packs 20. I, I, like, every time I drink coffee on one of these bloody things, I all I want in life, I want my freaking logo on a coffee mug. Like it's all I want. <laughs> I feel you. I actually, I, I understand that need. I love coffee mugs. Yeah. That's my favorite thing. And, um, and yeah, on a bookmark, my wife wants the, my wife wants one of the bookmark. Um, and so I just gotta, yeah, there's so much like, so much crap. I know, I know guys, but the thing is like, I can't just type something in times new Roman on a shirt. And but, but I'd buy, <laughs> I don't want it. To, I mean, I could do that, but like, I don't want it to be ugly. Like I like I want it to be something that people like DJ nuts. I want it to be I want it to be something. I don't know. I want it to look good. Um, and and thanks, Christian. Thank you for what you said about the logo looking clean. I agree. Like I think it. Uh, uh, I I just I that that's why I went with this person because of like the clean lines and the design. It looked exactly like better than I wanted it to look in my head. Um, I all I wanted was a burning light, burning a burning uh, ancient temple, because you can't you know. The library doesn't actually look like a library. It looks like a big old temple. I love the logo, dude. I think it looks great. I, I think that. I think you really should move on some merch. I really do. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, next week's the last week of school. So it's definitely going to be in the summer. And also, Fit to be Red, thank you for what you said about the Iliad. I appreciate that. Uh, Danelle said, Jimmy, can you pinpoint what exactly is vibing with you when it comes to Wheel of Time? I'm in the beginning of the fourth book, and I can lie, it's underwhelming with the expectations I had. Uh, pretty much nothing by book five, uh, book four and five. I, I, I don't like Wheel of Time. Not my bag. Uh, so, so it's like unsubscribe. So, Danelle, I, 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 I would agree with you. I felt very underwhelmed in book four and more, even more so in book five. So, I kind of gave it up. Even though they're taking up an entire shelf right here, I just love the art of them. 
Dislike, I, unsubscribe. Here's the thing. <laughs> Dislike, unsubscribe. Can't trust my opinions. I <laughs> hope I hope one day I do like Wheel of Time. And I and that's why I keep the books because I'm like, maybe one day I'll like them. But probably not. I've Maybe. still not I've still not read the Willful Prince. Uh, or, yeah, whatever whatever I always forget the name, but uh no, I haven't read it. I'm saving it for a um rainy day. Oh, Danelle meant not vibing. Um the characters mostly. Uh, and the writing. The writing and the characters just didn't do enough for me. Daniel Polanski is the spelling. Thank you. Yeah, people seem to like that logo, man. I appreciate that, guys. Thank you. Um, yeah, again, I had that like four months ago, I had this done and I just like last month changed my, my channel arts to be that. Um, um, so yeah, it's just, you know, it is what it is. Um, but, uh, Claudio asked if I would visit Alexandria. I definitely would. We have an Alexandria in Georgia that I think I've been to. Um, and, uh, I say, Ale I have to say. The problem is every time I have to say Alexandria, like in class, I slip up sometimes. Fortunately, I say it in the Iliad or in an, in an Iliad and I was able to um, cover it up. Thank you, Amanda. Um, it, no, I said Alexandria, but like sometimes I'll slip and I'll say Alexandria because Alexandria sounds <laughs> weird to me now because I've been saying it for two years. Um, speaking of which, when, when's your book two birthday? Did you just do your book two birthday? Uh, yeah, that was back in like February or March. Gotcha. I, think. I gotta film that freaking video. That's my next video because it's my book to birthday. Like last week, YouTube was like, Hey, it's been two years. I'm like, thanks YouTube. Yeah. I think I, I posted that when I was in Vegas. I think I scheduled it and, uh, yeah, I don't even remember what the tag had. I think it was an okay video though. I think it was a fun tag. Yeah. 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 It's, um, it is fun tag. I just gotta, I gotta, I gotta film something, Jimmy. I gotta film something. I gotta, I gotta do something. You know that, and you know, I know that you're like, you know, you were kind of shaking off the cobwebs. You're coming back, and then you hit me up, and you said, "It's time, <laughs> it's time for another episode." Oh, and yeah. I always feel bad because I'm like, you're nah. like, I don't want to take you away from doing stuff for your channel. No, I was watching Philip. I was like, I was watching Philip. I'm like, oh, Doctor Fantasy. I got show you how it's done. I got show you how it's done, Doctor. <laughs> He said, I could do better than this. <laughs> this garbage. Oh, him, him being on here, just like dunking on everybody. He's like, have you written a book? Oh, I have. It's being published. <laughs> and I said, I'm you like, know, 15 years. And he said, actually, it's 18, but who's counting? <laughs> yeah, exactly. 18. And it, it, it sounds exact. That's the tone you heard when he was talking about it, right? Like, oh, my finished my trilogy, right? You heard that tone. I'm just saying, guys, when you meet Philip in person, like all the things change. You realize oh, he's, that, the, he's you know, the worst. He's just so he's just a true bottom feeder. I mean, really, like all the people I've talked about, like in this stream, I'm really talking about Philip. Like, I don't have to. I don't. Did you just gasp? Christina, <laughs> Christina, do not defend Philip. <laughs> Philip has sunk his uh, poison into many of us, but I no longer fall for the charade after meeting him in person and watching him throw people's breakfast on the ground. <laughs> throw my bacon on the ground. Oh, Christian, that is a fantastic idea. Great idea. I am going to be in Rome in March with 30 of my students. And me. <laughs> and, and Jimmy. I'm uh, going to show up. And if I, I have got to do some freaking streaming on location in rome um that's a great awesome. idea that'll be awesome youtube set what <laughs> oh yeah yeah the, the um what hold on what sounds like mickey mouse confirm what is you, that you were saying a uh book two it's your two-year anniversary oh <laughs> <laughs> i forgot yes that is what it sounds like it's your two-year anniversary <laughs> 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 that's ridiculous oh man oh man Phil philip yeah though you know he's just the worst i came on i said hey philip could you not mention your book and he said jimmy this is an infomercial for me i gotta i gotta get these suckers uh, he said I, he said jimmy like jimmy i i understand that but like do you know who i am i'm dr philip chase and really if i wasn't here on this you'd have zero zero viewers so <laughs> i'm gonna talk about what i want to talk about jimmy because i'm better than you <laughs> isn't that doesn't that sound like philip yeah that's that does sound like to say yeah i mean you really see see how down and nasty he can be whenever you say well i don't know if i can read your book on release day and he's like what mate and you're like easy geez exactly exactly so uh, ap we, we, we got your back here 
Yeah, AP actually has the right of it. And big shout out to uh, AP. He's dealing with some migraines uh, that oh, are keeping him down. Oh, so oh, oh. if you want to send uh, AP some well wishes, go drop a comment on like one of his recent videos and just let him know you're thinking of him because he's going through some uh, really tough, tough migraines, like crazy. Um, he gets they're called cluster migraines, and they literally oh, happen for like six oh, weeks at a time. Awful. Yeah, and. And he feels terrible that, you know, he's not able to upload as much as he wants. I said, dude, just take care of yourself. Seriously. Yeah. Well, someone wants to know if you have any vacation plans for the summer. You coming up here or what? Are you, are you talking to me? Yeah. Oh. So in the summer, I will be going to Louisiana at the end of July to take the two girls to our national convention. Ugh. I, w I know. It, like, it, it moves every year. It was. Um, it just happens to be in Louisiana this year. Um, when I was in 11th grade, because I went to I went to nationals every year when I was in high school. In 11th grade, it was in Tallahassee. You know how many times I've freaking been to Tallahassee? Hundreds. And it's like, oh, guess we're driving over to Tallahassee, guys. So stupid. Um, where else am I going? I am. You guys are being so nice about the logo. I got Jim. I gotta dude, that logo is nice, dude. I got to get some merch out. Um, I, I, money on the table, man. Dude, I know. I know. I don't know. What's wrong. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, <laughs> Where else am I going? It, it is possible I'm going to D.C. It is possible I'm going to D.C. If I can make it happen, I'll make it happen. Um, what? Oh, yeah. I'm going to Bush Gardens because I always go to Bush Gardens. Um, and that's pretty much it. I don't travel a ton. It's expensive. To I thought you were coming up here. That's what I said. I said I'm going to D.C. Okay. So you are. Here. Okay. No, it, I mean, it is – it is a tentative plan to go to D.C. I'm going to try. to get. Dude, to I have this big old house now. You got to come stay. Where are you? I'm not saying that on. Oh, sorry. sorry. Are, you, are, you outside, are you outside the city is what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. How far yeah. outside the city? I'm not doxing myself. I'll tell you after. <laughs> Alan wants me to be murdered. No, it's I clear. don't. I just it's need obvious. to know how long it's going to take me to get to the city. I, I told Alan if I ever anything, God forbid anything ever happened to me, I would ship him all of my books. And now he's trying yeah, to dox me. Trying. Sorry, and Philip bought me off. Jimmy, I knew it. Sorry. My guests are turning against me and are trying to sabotage me. Oh, if I do come to DC, I will absolutely appear on Chatting with Nuts. That is definitely true. Yes. And, you know, I'm still hoping to have maybe two to four guests a year be in person because I've also talked with Philip as well. Um, Philip Chase. Yeah. Which he held me hostage. He said I had to have him on. Yeah, I know. But now that you've met him in person, like, are you sure? Yeah, like, you want to do impressive. that again? It's not that impressive. Like, is your house big enough? And he made us sign the NDA. Ego? He made us do the NDA. Oh, he did. he did. It's like, oh, geez. Is your house big enough to hold his ego? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> not at Phillip, all. Philip, we're so sorry. We're being so mean to Philip. I'm not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am sorry, mostly because my wife is standing right here at a frame threatening me. Um <laughs> I, I would like to come down and maybe go to Bush Gardens with you, but uh, I don't know. Let's we'll see what happens with the house. But I really was planning on maybe taking a flight down and, uh, Dude, and, and if saying you come hello. Down here, just let me know. Like, let me know in advance because we're trying to. We're trying to. Like, if if you know it's going to happen, let me know in advance so I can kind of uh, adjust things. Because you know I'll be out and about. So. But yeah, if you're down here, dude. The problem is you don't have any airports that have like direct flights. I've looked. I think no. I think PC flies directly to to DC now. Does it? Yeah, Southwest. I think we have a, we have a. Oh, south. okay. Um. Yeah, I'm almost certain that we do. Surely we do. I thought <laughs> I heard that. Poor, poor, uh, poor <laughs> Philip. But bless his heart. Do you have enough laurels for Philip to sit upon? Nothing. <laughs> no. That, like, there's not enough. There aren't enough laurel trees in the. Uh... My cats are allergic to tweed, so I can't have him. <laughs> Cats are unfortunate. To tweed. <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting here dunking on Philip. Poor guy. Yeah, dude's probably just sleeping right now. Just yeah, he, he is just napping away. He's been in bed for two hours. He's probably writing another novella or something. Yeah, and making sure. Yeah, yeah, making sure that we know he doesn't own a TV. Brings that up every time we talk to him. <laughs> dude, I love this. Hayden says Phil Chase. Phil Chase sounds like he takes. <laughs> A whole apple and slices it with a bowie that is knife. Excellent. That is excellent. He chunks off the knife and talks about his book with a mouthful of apple. That is excellent. I love that. <laughs> oh, Philip. What are you reading now, Jimmy, while I eat this? Um, all right. So, right now, folks, what I'm reading is I'm reading The Veiled Throne, which is book three in the Dandelion Dynasty. I don't know if I'll make a video about that. Uh, I started Jenny Wart's 
uh, book one in the Wars of Light and Shadow, uh, which is going to be a very slow read. The official read along starts in June, but I had to start early, uh, which is uh, Curse of the Mist Wraith. I'm really enjoying it so far. And I think I'm going to try to read Summer Night. I was going to hold off into our discussion, but I figure I don't want to wait. I kind of I kind of want to read some Dresden. So I'm going to try to sneak it in, uh, in before the end of the month. And if there's another book that I'm going to try to read, it'd be Blood Meridian. But I think it's going to have to wait. Uh, and I think I'm going to try Saga this. Cool. I think I'm going to try Saga uh, this weekend, maybe. Um, Look, I, should be able to, I should be able to read Summer Night next month. Um I'm not gonna have enough room for it. We're, we're just gonna keep putting off the discussion until we've read all of them. And then so I literally read. had I had literally opened flipping the our, our uh, Dresden discussion and then forgot to type in it. Um over here. <laughs> Guys, we need to schedule this. All caps. Man. We do need a New Zealand booktuber meetup. We do. I just I just sent that. Did you get it on the on the Discord where we're gonna make a I have everything muted, but let oh. me look. Yep, sure did. You Has don't got cool. that sweet dual monitor set up? I do, but I don't like I don't like to be distracted. I, I have to pay attention to oh, chat. Yeah, and, you know, it, it's tough. It's tough I, out here, you know. Um, but yeah, I really want to start uh summer night, so I think I'll be able to finish that. Uh what are you reading? Um, I'm currently so I'm finishing this this third um uh Parker novella called The Big Score. It's um so he has <sighs> Parker has a very distinctive style and uh there are like three novellas that deal with kind of demonic possession. And I read those back mm -hmm. in March. Um, and I, I'm not, a, I'm not the biggest fan of those. Zara likes those better than, better than I do, but I, I, I just didn't like those as much. This is a series of uh, um, three novellas about essentially the smartest person that ever lived. He's like the smartest, okay. He's like essentially the world stand in. He's the greatest philosopher, uh, alchemist. He's essentially Shakespeare. Um, or like he's also written everything that Shakespeare wrote or whatever. Uh, but he's also, he's a charlatan. Like he is, he is incredibly intelligent, but has spent 95% of his life flat broke because he is always on the run because he is a thief and a liar. And he writes things that he doesn't believe, but he knows will sell. Um, and so like the whole world, like uses his texts, like Plato and Aristotle, like to study ethics, like, oh, well, Salaninus says, and Salonis is like, I don't believe that. Like, I just, I just wrote it because they, they paid me to write it. Um, so he's just this complete hack. But it's so good. Like, Parker writes awful people. Like, they're just bad people. <laughs> but they're so endearing. And so I'm reading the third one uh, of, um, of that. And we're just like, you know something's going to happen. Like, there's always, there's always a trick that he's showing you. Like, Salonis is a magician. He's misdirecting you and you're reading it like, where's the misdirect? Where is it? Where? And then you end, you're like, I was looking for it. Like, how did I, how did I miss the misdirect? Because he's a completely unreliable narrator. It's written in first person. So Salonis is completely unreliable. Um, it, they're good. They're good. I don't like them as much as um, some of the, the novels, um, mostly because he gets bogged down in alchemy talk. And I'm like, I do not need to know the exact, exactly how you made whatever you're making with your alchemy. Um, but that's what I'm reading. And then I have to read, I'm buddy reading with Leanna, daughter of Red Winter, which is Ed McDonald, who wrote, um, Blackwing. Yes. Cause you had me hyped for Blackwing. Yeah. His, his new series starts with this book. It's an arc. So it's, it comes out next month. So I have to read that cause it's an arc. So Leanna and I are buddy reading that. Okay. And then after that, I have to read thousand names, uh, for my my the read along in my channel. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're not getting the God is not willing. Oh, no, not this month. Not Maybe next month. Maybe, Maybe in the summer. Because remember, I work in the summer, but I don't work. Sorry, I work a lot in the summer, but I don't have to stand in front of students for seven and a half hours. Right. You, you get know? the whole three months off and don't do anything. That's great. <laughs> I work every day during the summer. I just don't have to. Like, Wish I had the summers off. Jeez. Uh, Jimmy, I will literally show up at your door and they will just watch me RKO you out of nowhere. <laughs> I'd take it like a champ. <laughs> um, what are people saying? I'm also reading. Uh, I, I always forget this, but I'm reading it one chapter a day. Um, it's called The Damnation Game by Clive Barker. Oh, like nice. His, his first actual novel. Uh, it's weird 
it's okay. It's pretty good. I would give it. I'd give it a shot if you're interested in horror. Um, I, don't, I don't read a ton of horror anymore. Stephen King was was what I read, and now I don't. I don't read. I like. I mean, I like fantasy horror. Like Black Wings got a little bit of that, which I like. And I and I like. I like Lovecraft because. Yeah, I actually love fantasy horror. Um, whenever things lean into that, that was my favorite part of a Blood and Bone. I know that you were kind of medium on it, but like I really enjoyed that trilogy. Whenever it had the Katoshim and all these things, like yeah, it felt very horror. To I'm gonna me. say that my like m- the mood read struck me hard. I should not have read time of courage when i read it i just wasn't in the mood for it um and it it really really like hurt uh my view of it uh michael i am not eating a big zack snack i'm eating different chicken like chicken that i made at home as mm-hmm. opposed to a big zack snack uh monica yes folding knife is a great point to start in parker like i said earlier that i haven't had anybody um who's read folding knife on my recommendation dislike it um it's almost impossible to dislike basso that he's such a good character such a good character uh, uh lost scare said jimmy you're also reading attack on titan mate where's the respect i'm always reading attack on titan and Brazil. are you really yeah oh it's fantastic it's so good i um i have attack of titan on my watch list um oh, so okay. i will watch it i'm going to watch it eventually i just have not yet i just finished something what did i just finished watching community have you ever seen community i've seen like a first couple episodes really great I love community. I just rewatched. I'd never seen the sixth season. So I just rewatched the first five and then the sixth season is so good. So I just finished that. I'm now currently watching. I'm re I'm doing a doctor who rewatch because they just, re- they just announced the, um, the new, the, the new doctor. Um, and so I'm trying to catch up yeah. before the new series comes out after they fired Chris Chibnall and get out of here. I agree, Seth. Troy and I bet in the morning. <laughs> I love There's so many quotes. Like I, 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 I love Chevy Chase. I know he's a jerk. Uh, I've heard all this. He's stuff. horrible, but Pierce is hilarious on that show. I, I love Chevy Chase's movies. Like I've, I, I, he's great. There's actually a place in Maryland named after him too. Really? Yeah, Chevy Chase, Maryland. Uh, in person, Chevy Nuts is slowly but surely going to transition to a wrestling tournament, possibly. Possibly. Because I like winning. Uh, well, then I guess I can't come on there then. <laughs> I mean, you've already lost one. You're already zero and one. Listen, this is a uh, heresy, and it's, it's everyone false. tells me that Attack of Titan is really good. I just have not, uh, I have not yet sat down to watch it. It's so, it's really hard for me to watch other anime when I'm behind on One Piece, but I do every now and then, especially if the series isn't really long. Um, I watched the show. Um, I actually was really enjoying the anime. See what I did there? Uh, I, I was enjoying the anime, but. Uh, it was on uh, Hulu and it didn't have like an autoplay because I was watching the um, the dubbed version because I'm a heathen and uh, it wouldn't autoplay. And it was very annoying. So I got to like season three and I just was like, I'm going to read this instead. And actually, I like reading it more, which I know is not the popular opinion. Like a lot of people love, just love the anime because the soundtrack and everything. But that's just me. I um I, I grew up watching dub and I like was a hardcore dub defender. And then, you know, once I started taking Japanese classes and realized like it's not well, it is now. Now it's like the dub is dub like dub voice acting, especially from older anime, it's just bad. Like the actors are terrible. Yeah, pretty bad. But you know, once I got into college, I was like, they're cutting stuff in the dub. Like they're they're cutting things out, and I hate that. So then I weaned myself onto subtitles. Now, because of the way everything is filmed nowadays, where the music is too bloody loud and everyone mumbles, <laughs> I have to have subtitles in everything. Um, also, I'm getting older. Like I'm, I, you know, I'm also getting more hard of hearing. But I watch I watch everything with subtitles now. So I remember the first movie I the first movie I watched with subtitles. And let me know if you've if you've heard heard of this and chat. It was a it was a movie, a French movie called Brotherhood of the Wolf, and there was this like literally a whip sword in it. It's like this this live action movie about werewolves, and there, it was super bloody. But there was like one of those like Ivy from Soul Calibur, like an actual like bone sword that like like, like spine sword. It was that's like, cool. Awesome. But there were subtitles, and I was like, I'd never seen a subtitle movie at that point, so. Hmm. Very interesting. Moriarty the parrot. There is so much I I I I don't know what I should read or what I should watch when it comes to anime. Oh my gosh! 
<laughs> Panel, I, I will catch up because I'm only 150 episodes behind. And I know that's like only 150 episodes. I know. I know. If I want, I know. I know. But I, I can get it done. I just need to do it. Well, it looks like somebody had uh, uh, known what you're talking about. Yes, Brother of the Wolf. I, I saw it twice because I watched it. I went and saw it. The trailer looked really good. I saw it when I was in college. And then I brought a bunch of other people to see it because I was like, guys, look at this movie. And I don't remember anything about it except that freaking bone sword. Like, like it's. I mean, bone swords are pretty legit. It's a sword that's like a bone whip. <laughs> and it like, you press a button and it like flexes. It's weird. Yes. Look it up. That actually sounds pretty dope. It was really good. But um, I, I, uh, it's another book I was supposed to read this month. Like you asked me what I was reading. I'm like, I feel like there's another book I'm supposed to read. And I keep you read. How do you, I don't, I still understand how you read so freaking much. And you're like, I'm a slow reader. I can't read anything. And you're like, I don't 12 books a month. I don't do anything else. You have a job. Yeah. But like, that's it. I do. I do work out like two hours a day. You that's know what it is? And work. Uh, part of the reason I can't read anything is because I have to be at my job. Well, so I don't read 12 books a month. I mean, like, all right, so we got Wall of Storms, which I started last month. Yeah, but how long Throne. is Wall of Storms, Jenny, Jimmy? All right, Wall of Storms was like 800 pages, so fair enough. It's like you're, Hale, not, you're not reading like six books that are like 300 pages. I read, I read like five books a month. That's, yeah, that's, if, that's reasonable. But if they're all 800 pages, that's 4,000 pages. They're not, though. Pages. They're not, though. I read Child of God. It was 170 what, pages. What else did you read? All right, Child of God, it's like 170 pages. Okay. Project Hail Mary, it's like 300 pages. Okay. Veiled Thrones, 1,000. Wall of Storms is 800. <laughs> and I'm also reading Curse of the Mist Rate, which is like... Which is 700 pages. I got it right here. Yeah, it's huge. <laughs> Jimmy? <laughs> I have a very patient uh, wife, and uh, I refuse to work after hours at work. Um, Man, my... Ugh. I neglect my responsibilities um, as as a um, caretaker of a home. Uh, what else? <laughs> what else? Like that? Um, I, I just don't do anything else. Like, you know, I ride to the gym. I listen to an audiobook. Right? Audiobooks definitely help me out a lot. I got you. Um, and, and you know, what, another thing I've noticed, you know, you ever want to read, but you're too tired. Yeah, frequently, frequently. Or, or you're like, I want to read, but I and you're not even tired. Like you want to go to sleep, but you're like, I just don't have the brain power. Yeah. That's a lot of times, what, uh, sometimes I'm too. I'm like my mind is too focused on something else. Like I'm thinking about other stuff. And I know if I start reading, I'm not going to, I'm not going to retain any of it. I'm just going to be thinking yes. about what I'm thinking about. So you know what I do? Uh, that's when I do immersive read. That's whenever I grab the audio and I still want to hold the book and read along. And if I miss something, it's okay. That's that sweet tech money, Jimmy, that lets you have both. That's that sweet it no, money. It's the Libby. It's the Libby app. Oh, it's Libby. Libby no, app. It's no, it's that sweet IT money. Mo money, less problems. Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> Mo I, mean, money, I, I mean, I'm not a, a um, what's the word I'm looking for? A material person. Like, yeah. I don't buy a lot of things, but the one thing I do buy a lot of is. Uh, no, I get it. I get it. Not a lot. Yeah. Uh, audiobooks is uh, expensive. They're very expensive. If Libby doesn't have it, are I cringe. expensive. I get it, especially because the quality of them now are so much better than they used to be. Like, have you listened to an old audiobook? Like, like the, the recording is so trash. Yeah. <laughs> James Barster's in the first three Dresden books. <sighs> oh, it drives me insane, dude. <laughs> it's so bad. And now, I mean, it, they're phenomenal. So yeah. it's, it, it's one of those things where I get it, but, you know, I do the Audible uh, two books a month and it's like $22. I mean, that's crazy, you know, but I do it because I read them. So. Yeah, that's the yeah, I, that's um I was buying the for a while I was buying the three for thirty like credits yeah. thing that the special they do because yeah. you know I needed more than one. And then um, you do it so many times you realize you spent like four hundred dollars and you're like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I don't I don't listen to audiobooks fast because I really only listen to them on my commute mm -hmm. and then in the shower. So I don't listen for a long time every day. Wait, you listen to them in the shower? Yeah. What do you I do? Have, you put your phone in a bag or what do you I do? I have a shelf like literally right outside the shower curtain that's outside the shower. Like my, I have a window there. So there's a windowsill that I set my phone on. Okay. So, um, 
So I listen, I always listen to something. So when I have an audio book, I mean, I listen to music if it's not an audio book, but when I have an audio book, um, that's what I listen to. So like I said, I finished that office one and I have, I haven't decided what I want my next audio book to be. Um, so Ava, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kai. Like, I didn't even notice her, Kai, till you called her, called her to my attention and now I can't not hear her, <laughs> Ava. Um, so yeah, so yeah, that, so I don't, I don't listen to audio books enough. Like how far is your commute to your gym? Uh, so right now it's like 20, but it's about to be four minutes. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. My, my commute to work is about 20 minutes. And I'll also, so if it's an audiobook I really like, like the office one, I will put it on when I'm like taking the dog out mm -hmm. or cleaning up or whatever. Um, if it's an audiobook that is fine, then it's just the commute in the shower. And then if I'm cleaning or something, I'm putting on the TV. Yeah. Um, so it's just, yeah, I got to find an audio. Well, like, like Warlord Chronicles, I did more chores the just month so I was can... reading Warlord Chronicles so I could find a reason to listen to them. It's so good. Oh, man. Oh, oh. so good. I, uh, you know, also, I take a, a walk every day, middle of the day, uh, at least when the weather's nice. And that's like 45 minutes. I listen to an audiobook then as nice. well. So that nice. helps. Uh, which, by the way, taking a midday walk is probably the best thing about my job. The fact that I can do that is so nice. My yeah, goodness. I, I get a break. And so it's both good and bad. Like mm -hmm. last year, I for, for like last three years. No, I haven't let kids eat in my eat in my room, eat lunch in my room since my second year of teaching. So for like the last seven years, kids don't eat my room. I kick them out. And they're like, why, why not? I'm like, because this is my time without you. I need time where none of you are near me so that I don't kill you later. <laughs> but last year, this one, this one student like started asking if, if she could eat lunch in my room. And I'm like, no, you got to go. And then I would like, I would leave to go pick up lunch and I'd walk past her and be like, you sit out here by yourself? And she's like, yeah. And so, you know, that went on. And I'd walk by and be like, still no friends? And she's like, no. <laughs> this sounds like the beginning of a fantasy book, by the way. And then, and then finally, one day I was like, like, I don't, like, I don't know. She was like witching about her friends that she normally sat with, why she have herself. And I'm like, that's fine. You can stay in here. But I'm like, it can't be every day because I work. I work during my lunch. I never eat my lunch. I always work through my lunch. Because I, And I have planning and lunch back to back. So it's an hour and a half. So I can get yeah. a lot done. And I'm like, you can eat in here today, but you cannot eat in here every day. And you cannot tell anybody because then a bunch of people are going to want to come to my freaking room and eat. And she's like, okay, it's fine. And so that, that happened once. And then every now and then she'll be like, can I eat lunch in here again? I'm like, no, you ate lunch in here like yesterday. Go. <laughs> Bye-bye. Enjoy the wall. And then all of a sudden at the end of last year, I started being like, like, I just started, like, first of all, she's one of my best students. And then one of her friends is another one of my best students. I thought she didn't have any friends. I mean, not, not that had that same lunch. Not oh. that had that same lunch. Oh, so okay. she had a different lunch than, than her, than the, you know, three friends she has. Um, and somehow, and I don't, I still, I don't remember it. Like, I'm like, how on earth did y'all end up eating my lunch every day? At the end of last year, somehow I let them in my lunch, my, my room every day. Oh. And then now from the beginning of the year, they're in my classroom, like freaking all the freaking time. And so they eat, they eat lunch in my room every freaking day. And along with like four other kids. And I'm like, how did I get to where I am? <laughs> I used to have freedom from these people where I got work done because I don't get work done. I talk to them, which is awesome because I love them. But at the same time, I don't get any work done. I don't get any freaking work done because these kids are in my room. And they're like, they're like, sucks to suck, Walker. I'm like, I will throw y'all out. They're like, no, you won't. I'm like, you're right. <laughs> you're right. They know right. you too well. Uh, so they're just, they're just great kids. But I, I, you know, don't get peace. I don't get the peace and quiet that I used to. Yeah. And, so that is a negative. The trade-off's worth it, though. I love the kids I have this year. Um, after they're gone, like, ne they graduate at the end of next year. After that, I will probably shut it down again. Um, but 
that one girl's really proud of the fact that like she she was like beating on like she broke you. She, that's what she said. She's like, I was like, let me in, let me in, open up to me. And I finally broke and was like, you know what? Fine. Come on in. Fine. Fine, y'all. Let's come. Come on. And so, you know, it's a. Uh, it's really nice. It's they're, they're 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 just great kids. But uh I don't have any time to myself anymore. So. Yeah. <laughs> Alan That's right. Suck to... it, Philip. <laughs> <laughs> I bet your kids don't eat with you, Philip. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh poor. Yeah, I, I can imagine taking a walk is really relaxing. I just need like <laughs> just I just need my brain to be able to like have peace and quiet. So moving, like transitioning into, into a story on Friday, last Friday, we had a lock-in for our club um, for JCL, Junior Class League. I don't like saying Latin club because it's not what it is, but it's close enough. So we, we did really well at state and we've been wanting to have this like final like social events. We had a lock-in in the library. Um, but it was a pain in the butt because there's so much going on with testing. The principal would not answer my freaking emails. He would not answer my emails to being like, can we have this freaking lock-in? So literally on the day of the lock-in, after school was <laughs> over, no one knew if we were going to have it because he hadn't responded yet. So I finally emailed him back. I'm like, I just need to just give me yes or no. If no, fine. But he said yes. But he hadn't taken any precautions. So there's no AC. There's no AC in the, in the, in the library. None. Because we can't control the AC from the school. The district controls it from their building. So it's hot and there's no circulating air, but it's fine. We get to have our lock in. I bought a bunch of glow sticks. We literally played outside nighttime capture the flag and it was so much fun. But my legs, all of the joints stopped working in my legs because <laughs> I have not run like that. Like they didn't even know old man Walker could run that fast. But, oh, my gosh. It was, I, and earlier that day, we'd had chariot racing where they're running, pulling, like, colored wagons in chariot races. So they'd been running all day anyway, so everybody's exhausted. Um, it was so much fun. Uh, Christina played with us, too. So it was, it was tons and tons and tons of fun. And um, so we had the lock and everything. Everyone's exhausted because they got mad at me. Uh, like, a lot of them were trying to apparently trying to sleep late, and uh, me and some other students were playing a game, and I'm loud. Like, I'm just loud, and I don't know why they're You are? Loud. Yeah, I know. And they're like, <laughs> we were trying to sleep, and y'all were being too loud. I'm like, why didn't y'all say something instead of sitting over there witching about it? Um, I'm like, like I don't care. It's a lock-in. Why are y'all going to bed anyway? Everyone's tired. And then Monday, everything starts to go awry. And so by Tuesday, I don't feel great. One of my students has slept, like I told you, like a, like a total of 60 hours. And so the dominoes start to fall. She tests, has COVID. A kid completely asymptomatic, has COVID. Boop. I'm like, oh no, I, ain't, I have not had COVID. I test, I'm like, son of a crap. COVID. <laughs> the, the SGA president, the overall SGA president, who's the president of my club also, COVID. Another one of my uh, Quiz Bowl team members, COVID. The girl <laughs> whose head, the original one's lap, she, the original infection, her head was in this girl's lap, getting her head rubbed for like four hours. No COVID. <laughs> and so I have to stay out. I'm out. All four of those kids are out. And the problem is, is Gigi, um, she's, I've taught her for four years. She's fantastic. She's the, she's so friendly. That's why she's SGA president. She's giving a speech because graduation is the next day. She has to miss graduation. And so me and the two girls and her got in a live in, in discord and we live streamed the graduation and poor Gigi standing there in her cap and gown projecting it onto her wall in her room like and she turns her cap like she doesn't get to give her speech um, wow. i made her give her speech to us and recorded it um in yeah. the discord but like poor girl had to miss her graduation because freaking covid and so, so are you out of school then are you done i no school ends next week oh okay I'm back okay. today i tested negative okay but graduate but graduation already happened Gra the seniors always graduate a week before everybody else is out. We can have. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, cool. And so 
all my kids have been out. Like all the kids who normally congregate in my room at lunch, dead, like sick, like COVID. It has been so bizarre sitting in my room for an hour and a half with nothing but the sound of my door opening for kids coming to retake crap. Because I hate that sound. Oh, door, Ms. Walker, uh, can I retake this? So I got to sit with a kid that I don't like in my room <laughs> during my peace time. But I don't have, like, I don't have the other kids to talk to while they're doing that. So it's miserable. It's just miserable. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> they always come into my room after school and, you know, just, they just hang out in my room while I'm finishing work and stuff. School's over. I'm just sitting there like, this is weird. Like, yeah, they've been they, all year. Like, it's been all year. And all of a sudden, I'm just like, this is very strange. So, yeah. So, they've been out with COVID. Hopefully, they'll be back Monday. Um, one of them tested negative. So, uh, but yeah, it was bizarre. And I'm going to find who showed up to this lock in with COVID and then freaking infected everybody. I'm going to find out who did it. And then I'm going to, I'm going to put a stocks and or pillory in the front of the classroom <laughs> and I'm going to have people throw rotten food at them. <laughs> anyway, that was a really long story. That was so. amazing. <laughs> I think I have to go eat dinner. I think, I think. Are you tapping out? Are you tapping out? Are you admitting defeat? I am admitting defeat because I am very hungry. Oh, I'm so sorry. And I I told that really long story and all you want to do is go eat. (laughs) No, no, Alan, absolutely not. You're fine. You're fine, man. I appreciate you taking three hours on a, uh, on a Friday night with me, uh, as you always do, at least once a quarter. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. (laughs) Um, and if I'm in DC again this summer, we are definitely going to, um, person. Yeah, we're definitely going to do it. In, whatever in, day it is, we'll just make it work. It doesn't have to be Friday at 730. It'll be whenever. Well, whatever. We'll That's do right. it. Cool. Well, Jimmy, thank you so much for having me on again. And uh, sure. chat, you guys are the best. Like, this has been so much fun. Yeah, yeah I love y'all um, so much. Uh, this is always my favorite time of my weeks whenever this is uh, it's on. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks. Hit the like button on the video, please. That really helps me out and helps it. Uh, other people see it later on. Um, and of course, I, you all are subbed down this channel. But if not, you got to catch them up to me because now I'm big time. So, um. I, yeah, I know. Like, pretty soon <laughs> Jimmy's going to leave me behind. <laughs> He's a big leagues. Yeah, big leagues now. Alan, thank you so much. Uh, thank Thanks, you to Jimmy. Christina for letting me borrow you for three hours. It's very, um, very kind of her. Word. Um. <laughs> She's giving you a thumbs up. I'm giving her two thumbs up. Because my poor wife has COVID now. Like I don't, but she does. I hope she feels better. She does. Yesterday, she said, My skin hurts. Uh, I'm like, I don't know what that means. Well, the best be- the best of luck. The best of luck. And yeah. as always. Oh, you 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 caught me off guard. I I, I don't know what to do. What do, do I take it home? <laughs> and as always, keep turning the page. You keep turning the page. <laughs> We love y'all. We'll see you in two weeks. Well, (laughs) I will. Though, if Alan might take over my show, who knows?